There's a bunch of topics. Bam, we're live. Awesome. I want to, if you don't, so there's a bunch of topics I want to ask you about mm. um, this morning. Uh, I want to ask you about, we want to talk about WHO. I want to talk about your a piece that you talked about, about the Titan as a distraction. Mm. Because mm -hmm. people always say that um, this this news piece was a distraction for this one. And it's starting mm. to become even in my own head, like, hey, people are always saying that. What, what does that mean? I want to talk mm. about kids' schools. I want to talk about the riots in France. I want to talk about Jack Dorsey. Mm. Cool. But before we start, there's something I want to show you. Do, um, do you, are you on a computer screen? I am. Yes. Okay. Cool. Our connection is great this morning. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Always helps. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, um, you're gonna have to do your own investigating. But uh, Lewis Brackpool, I found him through uh, Rebel News. Are you with Grit News now? Yes, that's my own company now. Oh, which is great. Which is awesome. cool. Okay, that's right. And we talked about that last time. You'll soon find out that my memory is horrible. <laughs> okay the the p the the um the grit news piece on who is uh fantastic by the way thank you uh, thank the you WHO is the reason why i got kicked off of youtube for some weird reason youtube follows who guidelines when it comes to talking about covid and no because way. because i said that you could use exercise and nutrition as the best way to prevent yourself from getting um a gonorrhea uh <laughs> I was kicked off of YouTube for a week, which is nuts. For, was it gonorrhea? That's not a joke. No, no, it wasn't gonorrhea. It was the other thing. Right, okay. <laughs> the thing that it's actually, actually, uh, I would argue that exercise and um, good nutrition will actually increase your chances of getting gonorrhea. Believe really? Well, you're more likely to get fucked by someone. Someone, Someone's going to want to... Uh, <laughs> Someone's gonna want to see you naked and sleep. I with swear you. it's I swear it's so early where you are, dude. Like. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so you know the other thing. So um, I thought Trump got rid of WHO. He needs to. Anyway, yeah. we'll get to that in a second. I want to show you something just absolutely. I, I think this is a museum quality specimen of what's going on with the insanity in the world right now. Mm. So someone sent me this. The, the person who sent me this hates my guts, right? They fucking hate me. Right. And they said, hey, look at these are your people. And if you look at this, look, this post has 22,280 likes. And, right. um, and this, um, this account has 12,000 followers. And I'll go back and show you this account. This is some Irish guy that just um, – who's a – a communist fascist totalitarian who who thinks he's a peace loving hippie. Well, right. I'll show you his account in a second. But that's a, that's the typical confusion, right? There's these people that are like um peace and love, but mm. until like you say something like hey, we shouldn't use race as a determinant for people to get into college, then they want to kill you. Right. Right. It's bizarre, right? Or mm. if you say hey, um I think we should keep pornography out of school. They they claim you're a, a book banner. And you're like, no, no, I love pornography. Yeah. Let's just keep it over in the 7-Eleven in the liquor store. With right. the tits and ass and the in the anal, anal eating, whatever that stuff's called. ATM. Oh, that's called ass to mouth. <laughs> that, that that in the liquor store behind the uh Indian guy. The, Abu, can you get me the ass to mouth issue of uh Hustler? Thank you. Not uh Mrs. Jensen, um uh I'm seven years old. What is what does that mean? ATM. It's, it's like just we just yeah, not, not so there. bad. Okay, so they hate us. They think that we're they they think we hate to party or that we're book banners, but we just we just think everything anyway. So this is at some sort of uh, Republican convention thing, and and I want you to I'm going to play this for you a couple times and and. It's so interesting how I took it versus how all of these people took it who are saying who wait till you see, wait till you see this. This is just absolutely insane. OK, here we go. Discovering his parents and conservatives is wait a second. Education really is evangelism. So if you don't control education, you cannot control the future. And, and, and Stalin knew that Mao knew that. Right. Hitler knew that. We have to get that back. OK. So this guy, so what I bring to this when I watch this is I know that 87% of all teachers are liberals. 
And I know that the liberal ideology is to uh, ban free speech, to allow the government to interfere with free speech with the media. That's mm -hmm. that is a cornerstone for fascism, totalitarianism and communism. Right. Mm -hmm. They have to control the media. It's like mm -hmm. it, it's part and parcel with that mindset. And and you have to control the education. That was Hitler's whole thing. Separate the kids from the from the parents. And so what he's right. saying is he's giving three examples when I hear this of horrific people who've done that in the past. And he's mm. comparing it to what the liberals are doing now. They're basically yeah. telling kids it's okay to masturbate at six years old. It's okay to um, uh, play the victim to get attention even or play the oppressed, even if it means like the oppressed being the opposite sex. And mm. and, and, and he's using the, the liberals as the example. But, and let me play a little bit more. For conservative values. You know, what we're discovering as parents and conservatives. Okay, so the person who sent this to me is claiming – that this guy is is saying out loud that Republicans, which I'm not a Republican, but he, what he's saying is is that Republicans want to be like Mao and Hitler and Stalin. That's and and thousands of people are reading it like that. So I went back to the original piece just to make sure I'm I'm hearing it right. Yeah, play that again. Do you mind if you play that uh, no, again? No, no, no. So I'll play it again. Yeah, it's, I'm glad you, I got your attention. This is and this. The reason why this is museum quality specimen is this is where the problem is. Those people, they're riding with the Hitler posse, but they're pointing at the other's team, saying they're the Hitler posse. They don't realize. No, it's your team that used the FBI to hide the bunter, mm. uh, bunter, the Hunter laptop <laughs> Biden story. It's your team that took made it so the largest amount of businesses closed during the COVID pandemic and mm. you wouldn't let Americans work. It's your business. It's your team that covered kids' mouths. It's your team that forces kids to take drugs made by pharma mm. to go to mm. school. Mm. And yet it, it's, it's fucking mind-boggling to me. Okay, here we go is, wait a second, education really is evangelism. So if you don't control education, you cannot control the future. And, and, and Stalin knew that, Mao knew that, right? Hitler knew that. We have to get that back for conservative value. So what those people are hearing is, is that that guy is saying that he wants to be like yeah, Mao he, and they've, Stalin they've taken it. and Hitler. Dude, yeah, they've taken that completely out of context. Completely. They're saying we need to get... We need to get it back to normal, is what he's saying. Yes. We need to we need to reclaim it back from the Maoists. He's and saying right the now, Stalinists. yeah, he's saying right now it is like that. Yeah. And that the Democrats yeah. know that and that the Republicans are because the Republicans are trying to talk logic. They're fucking yeah. And the, the liberals are talking emotion, and emotion is trumping logic. Mm. Yeah, that I took that <laughs> as as ed, the educational system has, has slipped so far to one side. And yes. has gone to the point of evangelism, um, whether it be through critical race theory, whether it be through lots of different ideologies. And he's saying that that because it's under this po uh, political ideolo ideological control, that they need to take that back. They need to say they need to separate it again. They need to say no. Hang on a minute. It's more of the parents' right as opposed to the state. That that's what I took from that. Uh, I don't see him saying we need to get back more like Hitler or we need to get back more like Mao, Mao or, or Stalin. I, I didn't hear that at all. So this but geezer, brother, that's how that's how look at I, I cannot believe um, everyone here is taking it's called yeah, uh, this just, these people. This is collective thinking now. Because you say one thing and you and you frame it in one way without listening to the context. Like really, what I want to do is I want to hear the full interview. Um, and then you'll get a then you'll get a very very good idea. Um, let let me let me read content. this comment to you. This is from Linda Seiko, citing right. Stalin and Hitler as models of leadership on the necessity no. of controlling the education system is no mistake. He's stating unequivocally that the GOP is now pro authoritarian. He said the exact opposite of what yeah, she said. The saying. opposite. Yeah. <laughs> And that has 3,000 likes. Yeah, people, because when he said, we need to get this back, they they took that as, oh, we need to get this back to the Stalin days or the Hitler days, when really he was saying, we need to get this back to normal. <laughs> we need to revert, we need to reclaim it. That's... <laughs>
Yeah. And I then listen to this. You get Did you wrong. all get that? They're admitting the evangelicals want control of the people. This must stop. Uh, oh. That's authoritarianism. It's like, no, really? dude, we're already in authoritarianism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're merging the corporations with the big state. So that is the definition of fascism, if you want to go through the, the history book. So I've not seen them, I say them, liberals, talk about <laughs> the the chaos that's ensuing with that. That's, we, that's a, a law just passed in California that it's child abuse if you don't um uh accept your your if you don't follow along and listen to your child about their gender affirming needs. Yes, I saw that. Nuts. Uh, excuse me. That's that's about as crazy as it gets. That the, yeah. the state can take your child away because you won't let your boy turn into a girl. A Stalin Mao Hitler conservative value says it all. Look how he read it. Oh my! Another days. one. That's so bad. It's the power of context, the power of context and social media and someone wanting to frame something in a certain way for political gain is it's it's incredible how um, how many people you can convince. But Lewis, what's even crazier than it's taken out of context and that it's being misunderstood is that they these people don't realize it's them. <laughs> Do you know what it's I mean? It's a reflection of them. <laughs> They're the ones who want my kids to take the mm. 72 injections required to make it to the sixth grade at the local school here by law or else my yeah, kids can't nuts. attend, which they don't yeah. attend. But <laughs> Oh, dude. I, I know. it's this, Like I said, We're not this even is talking. the power. We're not even talking. Yeah. yeah. This is it's we, polarization. We, this is. And what's crazy is we can see them and uh -huh. we can see ourselves. Mm. But they can't see they can't they they only see they, they only see they don't see anything. They don't see themselves or us. Where you know, are they? They're trapped. I always call that trapped in your head. They're trapped between their ears. Where are they? 100 percent. Ninety one thousand likes. That's that's pretty insane. This guy is insane, dude. This <laughs> Irish dude has uh, he has he. He him. he him, right? Um, okay. He he's quoting the the Buddha. This too shall pass. Okay. He's a mental health advocate. I mean that right away. And <laughs> and he's uh, he's uh he's just made his whole um Instagram account hating on the right. Right. Interesting. They are extreme right wing nuts. Is what I see from that, and it's just Desantis. Well, they're extreme left wing nuts. Yeah. This is the, do you know what? It's just the classic polarization of the internet. Um, embed yourself into one uh, tribe and just never, ever consolidate with the other side, quote unquote. Um, you know, I wonder, I wonder if this person would act like that in like, in like a bar or something. You go, actually, you know, I quite like Trump. Trump's, Trump's actually all right, blah, blah. You think he just gets up and just <laughs> yeah yeah to yeah yeah he, yeah he he um <laughs> that's funny. I was at a coffee shop here in um in Santa Cruz during the last mm. election, and a man at the table next to me. Uh, it's it's a coffee shop where I was the youngest person there. It's all old people. I call it the geriatric cafe. Like forty <laughs> old people on the patio, and right. uh and. And uh, someone mentioned Trump. These three men were talking, and they mentioned Trump. And a, a attractive older woman, probably like seven year old, beautiful, thick, gray haired woman, looked right. perfectly sane to me. J jumps up and comes over and yells at the men, "You will not mention Trump." I mean, and, and I live in oh. like I live in the hive, in the liberal hive, mm. and uh, I live like in one of the virtue capital capital uh, virtue signaling capitals of the world. And she jumps up and starts yelling at them. And the guy's like, we weren't even saying anything nice about him. She's like, I don't care. And then the owner had to come out and make this declaration. Listen, this is the United States of America. No politics on the patio, people. I'm like, holy I'm shit. I'm like, that's so bad. Surely it's United States of America. You're allowed to say what you like as long as just, there's no incitement. Like, surely that's the correct answer. The word Trump triggers people. I don't I I don't understand why. I mean, I get it. Some people like find him very divisive over the past, like how many, however many years. Some people say he's brash. I understand. Um, but, you know, 2016, when I was watching his uh, triumph into the elections, you know, it, it, the polls came out and said, no, he's got no chance. He's got absolutely no chance. Same with Brexit. Oh, it's got no chance of passing. 
And then when it happened, it was it was this big shock and people didn't know what to do. People just like sort of scrambling around and it was like, okay, well, these next four years or these next three and a half years, it's going to be really interesting. And Brexit uh, was awesome. Brexit was awesome. <laughs> I'll tell you what, um, the problem is with Brexit, I found, because I voted leave, um, I found that when you have people who, in Westminster who love the European Union and voted Remain, but then are tasked with, right, you have to leave, you have to leave the European Union, they sort of dangle one foot in and dangle one foot out, and that's yeah. the mess that they've created now because of oh. Brexit. Oh. So it's not pro been properly done. And uh, there's even talks about when the next government will come in, because they'll come in, Labour, with this uh, Keir Starmer bloke. When they come in, uh, there's there's talk about them potentially rejoining or campaigning to rejoin, which is going to make even more of a mess. So, right. you know, it's, it's a continuous cycle of bullshit, really. But, uh, yeah, I voted leave. I'll do it again. <laughs> It's it's funny. Back then, I didn't even I didn't even realize the impact of it being just more one world order shit. Mm. The European For sure. Union. Yeah, I mean, the idea of uh, of unelected bureaucrats dictating the laws of a sovereign nation, supposed sovereign nation, is just is crazy to me. Um, Explain what you mean by that. Because um, what are you talking about? Like the WHO is unelected, and yet they want to control. Or what do you mean? That's also part of the European Union. That type of Unelected people make the rules. Yeah, they're all in bed with each other. I mean, the European Union, a lot of the the people at the top, they're all unelected. It's all just sort of rubbing shoulders, get to the top. That's it. Um, so, so they're not they've not been on a ballot paper as such, where the the people vote them in. Um, so you only have the MEPs that sort of represent that party that, that gets the vote in. Um, but the people at the top, no. So then you've got. These people who nobody have even heard of in England or, or Britain dictating laws. So there was this guy, right, this this um, jihadist from England, right, committed these awful crimes. And they were like, OK, we want to just the guy who was him. cutting people's heads off in public. Uh, I think his name is Abu Hamza. Is, uh -huh. His name is uh, he had a he had a claw as well. He had like a hook for a hand. So a proper bad guy. Um, Abu Hamza al Masari. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. Um, and so we wanted to to deport him, and uh, we said, "Look, this guy's awful. Like, you know, we can't have him here." And you have to go through a process with with deportation. Uh, yeah, that's the guy. His nickname uh, is Captain guy. Hook. <laughs> Proper bad guy, and. Um, we were like, right, well, we need to we need to get rid of him. And um, the EU blocked it. And that was a big wake-up call for a lot of people. And it was like, hang on a minute. How, how do you get to dictate what we're to do as a sovereign nation? And that sort of woke a lot of people up. Woke I want to kick someone out of my house. Yeah. And the mayor comes and says, no, you can't kick him out no, of your you house. You can't do that. And take your locks off as well whilst you're at it. Oh, fuck <laughs> Keep your door open. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so that was a big sort of wake up call, and we were like, "That's not right. <laughs> Something needs to be done about that." So, um, it was mostly about law. It was mostly about borders, but as we know, that's not really done much. Um, but uh, yeah, the the EU basically had their had their final say, and they blocked it. They said, "No, you can't do that. It's against human rights." Where's the EU life. located, Lewis? Where's Where's their headquarters? Brussels. So I say that I was there the other day. So <laughs> Brussels. <laughs> and it's and it's shitloads of um uh it's just more layers of bureaucracy, more yeah. of just tax dollars, money going yeah. to just employing people for doing nothing. They're, they're yeah. When I think of politicians, I just think of them as part of the welfare system. It's a popularity contest to see who can get a check. Hundred percent. And I'll tell you what, man. When I went there the other day, it was the first time going there. It is a weird place. Like you can tell, it's a bubble within a bubble. Like they just have, they're just in their own, they're in their own world. And even the architecture inside and the artwork that's around in the building, like it's all abstract and weird. And like obviously the Ukraine flag is just plastered everywhere. Oh, um, shit. Really? Yeah, so it's all that. And you've got outside, there's like, um, 
Uh, oh, I'm seeing if I can see it in the uh, in this. But there's like it's like a dome part, like outside, and around it is like all this sort of mask propaganda, and it's like kids with masks on oh, saying "Health still? is first. Still? Yeah, still. And I'm looking at it, and I'm going, "These guys are in their own fucking world. Like this is nuts." And um, being yeah, European really is kind of weird, isn't it? Is is being European weird? <laughs> Um, I I don't know how to answer that because I don't know anything else. So. <laughs> have you been over here to the states? I have a few times. Yeah, does it I love it weird? there. Does it? You do. Where did you go? I've been to, I've been to the roughest and the nicest. I've been to Oakland. I've okay. been to New York. Uh, I've been to Las Vegas. Um, I've been to Florida. Um, I've been to Tampa. I've been to, gosh, really testing me now. Um, Have you been to the middle anywhere, Lewis? No, I'd love to go. My my ultimate place to go in the United States is Texas. That's my ultimate. The East Coast is kind of weird. Like Europe is weird. There's just – it doesn't feel free like the West Coast or like the center of the country because it, it, at least when I was a kid, when I would go there, they're, all their roads are like toll roads. So even right. as a, even for the last 30 or 40 years, it, when you move around, you're always being – you're always having to stop and pay. Mm. And there is a – a, a sort of this um uh i don't know what it, it just feels like you're working inside of an infrastructure like how you yeah like how i picture like these little tiny european countries like when i hear people yeah. or, or even new zealand when i hear people talk who live in new zealand i'm like oh you don't really know what freedom is <laughs> you, you're, you're stuck on this little island and you kind of you don't you're not you don't experience the vastness mm. of uh that's that's the strange thing that I find when I go to America or Canada, mm. especially. There's yeah. so much space. There's so much open field, and I, I get it. Like we've got fields here, but it's a little bit different. Um, the spacing within the country is just so vastly different. And then you, like, I went away for like a week to to Canada, and there was so much space. And it's the same in the U.S. I came home and I felt cramped. It was really weird. Like everything's all sort of built together really close together mm -hmm. like where i live in this in this kind of village slash town like it's just houses next to it like literally attached to each other um and it's you you find how weird that is once you've been to america or canada and all the houses are completely separate and they've got like sp like a lot of space in between each house and even if you're driving down like the highway or whatever like you just see this vast open space and you're like wow, like we don't really, we have that somewhere in, in England, but it's not, it's not in like, it's not in everyday life. So you feel almost cramped. Um, I guess that's why a lot of us like hiking <laughs> over here. Yeah. Let me, let me let uh, some of these uh, um, people, just, the EU are unelected and yet can make decisions about UK law. It's completely undemocratic. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's basically the WHO is trying to do that also, right? Mm -hmm. Worldwide. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, um, being from California is weird. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm enjoying Kentucky more and more these days. Oh, I'd so like to go there too. I'd yeah, like to so go there too. Wide open, right? Just mm. why, uh, why? So there's places in this country where you could just go and build a home. Uh huh. And then there's places like where I live, even though I'm in the country, I'm in California. If I built a shack in my backyard, there's a mm -hmm. chance someone would report me. Really? Yeah. Okay. So a lot you of know, red tape. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just right. levels of, of red tape. Uh, free state of Florida. Someone, yeah. uh, whoa, 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 Sevy. Uh, Florida is as free as it gets. All right. Settle down. <laughs> Everyone settle down. Jumping on you there. <laughs> down. Um, <laughs> UK Parliament are loaned rights every four years by the British people in an election. They should return those rights back to the UK people undiminished. Instead, they gave our rights away to the EU. What, what did yeah. I explain that to me? I'm not following that. Yeah. So it's like it says on the tin. Um, our Parliament, Westminster, have sold us out completely and sold us out to the EU um, for globalist interests. Um, and that's what we've been seeing for years. And, and a lot of people couldn't see that <clears throat> for, for many years. But even ever since leaving the European Union, quote unquote, because we technically haven't, because um, we're still part of the ECHR, and, and which is the European Court of Human Rights, um, which can still block things like 
deportations from criminals, things like that. Um, Where were you the problem guys going to deport that guy to, by the way? Back to Egypt? I think so. I okay. think that's where it was. It was a long time ago. I was, yeah. Um, so, it, yeah, it's, it, it's very strange. And what you'll find in Westminster is, is I want to say like 98% of them just don't represent the people's interest. It's their own agenda. Even though the people, suppose, like, quote unquote, elected them to that position of power, um, and they just don't fulfill the, the people's needs. And that, that just goes across the board. When you have two parties, what do you do in a country that's supposedly democratic, where you have two of the main parties, Labour and Conservative, quote unquote, Conservative, um, with both the same interests, whether it be net zero, whether it be uh, staying with the, the WHO, whether it be... Oh, well, climate anything... change is real there? That's that's It's real? Yeah. To the, oh to the yeah, government. net zero. They love net zero over here. Yeah, that's like a big sort of thing. Oh Boris Johnson, when he was in power, um, he's put forward a thing to say that by 2030, um, petrol and new petrol and diesel cars are to be banned. So you cannot buy a new petrol and diesel car by 2030. For anyone who's getting like, I, I know that's a triggering topic for people, but for <laughs> anyone who 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 is like sitting on the fence about climate change or whatnot. There's some really simple things you can Google. Um, Google uh, the dirtiest um, ships in the world, and you'll see that there are ships out on our sea that do the equivalent of, uh, of polluting that uh, 50 million cars do in a year. So one ship does the same amount of pollution as 50 million cars in a year, and then there's only 950 million um, cars on planet Earth. And there's more than 15 of these ships on our ocean. So just start like you can start contextualizing or putting things into a relative situation that them attacking our cars. Uh, I'll, I'll use a different word. That, that's a biased word attacking those using our cars to mitigate damage to the environment is completely absurd. Oh, it is. absurd. It, com you should look it, is com it is completely. It's like it's like wanting to get rid of all the hair on your body and starting to <laughs> use tweezers. It's like, come on, come on. Like you, you should. Um. You should look at, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, the wind turbines and the blades, they can't, because they're made of fiberglass, I believe, they can't be recycled. Uh -huh. And they last, wind turbines last like 15 to 20 years. So you can't, they're not, they say it's renewable. It's not, because you can't even, they, they have to bury them. I think there's like graveyards and graveyards of wind turbine like blades. I they drove can't through, be. I drove through a part of China one time, Western China in the desert there. And I saw the biggest windmill fields that any human beings ever fucking seen. And but there was a graveyard for uh, windmill parts that I saw yeah. that went on for forty minutes. You're yeah. right, blades like as long like as long as football fields. Yeah, it's just nuts. as far as the eye can see, dumped. Yeah, exactly. And how is as well? You look at like China's I, crazy, dude. China's I can crazy. imagine. I've never been. Do you know? I I'd, I'd go just for like a week. Yeah. Just to like, as a journalist, just to, you know, scope the place out. Obviously, I probably wouldn't be let in, but um, that would be great fun. But, it's a uh, great cultural experiment they're running over there. It's worth going and seeing. It's very clean. The Asians are very clean. Well, cool. I shouldn't say all Asian, but China and Japan are clean as shit. Have you been to Japan? No, it's, it's my bucket list. That's my ultimate place to go. Is Dude, Japan. Their homeless camp is cleaner wow. than most of our cities here. Wow. Like the homeless tents are all set up perfectly. The guys hang their shirts. It's a trip. It's a trip. Wow. Japanese people, yeah, even the crazy ones are, are... <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've got, to, I've got to go. It's my, it's my ultimate um, sort of place to go. Um, that's on my list. You think that you would be banned from China? Um. Well, the reason why I'd want to go to China is just to scope out things like uh, WeChat and. Um, just their social credit score system and do like, I'd love to do like a documentary or like a report on, um, on that, on like the social credit system over there and just try and uncover it because, you know, you hear chatter online, you see like videos online, but I want to see it. I want to see it for myself. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of that sort of dude like where <clears throat> a lot of people say things and you go, okay, yeah, yeah. That's oh, you, you hear rumors and things, but then you sort of, there's something in me that goes, well, I want to go there and see it. I want to actually document it myself. So 
obviously I've just admitted this on a podcast. So <laughs> whether whether um, the Chinese I government, I don't feel like <laughs> that they were hiding any of that stuff. They're not. They're not. But to to uncover it as a Westerner and yeah. to, to say how bad it is and that we shouldn't have it in the West, um, and of course showing citizens in China that um, that haven't kept up, kept up to their standard, the CCP standard, so that so therefore they can't get on trains, they can't like go on public transport, like to even document that and just show a bad light in China, I think they would have a big problem with that. Um, <clears throat> Pain so, in a good light. Pain in a good light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is great. This social credit score system. I can't even get on a tray. It's brilliant. <laughs> There's cameras everywhere. It really, yeah. um, there yeah. were an obscene amount of cameras mm. and, and, a, and, and more tall buildings than you could ever imagine, just like stacked with people living in them, like just dormitory style buildings. 50 stories tall, as far as your eye can see. Kind of weird mm. shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Nuts. We've got a lot of cameras here because of Tony Blair. Um, you, have, you, have you been to England? Not, uh, I used to, I went to school there for six months in, in, in 1990. And then I've been there maybe a dozen times just for work. Something happened mm. there and I, I went over and filmed something there. Um, <clears throat> but not in a long it, time, probably not in 10 years. It's weird because apparently, according to like Americans and um, and Canadians, and um, they uh, they can see the the CCTV. Uh, I can't. I can hardly see it because I don't notice it because it's just apparently it's just everywhere. But because I'm so used to it, when you go to the cities um, and just around, like you just don't don't filter it in, into your brain. But um, for like Americans and Canadians who who don't have a lot of that, um, when they go to like places like a, a London. Uh, they that you could you guys could easily pick out the CCTV and see how dystopian it is. Whereas someone like me, I can't see it. It's Do like you have it's access a weird... to it. Can you go to the internet and see your watch your cameras? I I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I think you can know. do that here. We have a lot of cameras here, but I'm pretty sure someone will, that you can go. They're called traffic cameras. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> and, I'm, okay. and I'm pretty sure that we have access to them, but they're all over my town too. I feel like at every mm. intersection and I live in a small podunk town. Mm. That's cool, man. No, it's not cool. Well, the <laughs> small podunk part's cool. The cameras aren't cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're not cool. What are you so. trying to hide Lewis? Why are you afraid of thousands of cameras watching? It's true. Um, you know, I was going to make a joke, but then I thought, mm, better not. <laughs> just no, go ahead. Case. Go ahead. I can't, man. I'm not allowed to make jokes in this country. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter, uh, kicked mm. Trump off of uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw this uh, recently. I don't know. Ah, I haven't seen this. Yeah. Yesterday or, or today. I can't even remember. Okay. Here we go. This is interesting. Here we go. And you know he was on Joe Rogan kind of saying that he, he wished he wouldn't have kicked Trump off. He said that like a couple years ago or a year ago. Did he say that? that? I, yeah. I hadn't seen that. Wow. Don't quote me on that. We'll find the exact quote, but, but check cool. this out. Cool. Check this out. I believe it was probably the right decision for the company, but the wrong decision for the world. And we saw a lot of follow on um, companies such as AWS. So for people who don't know what AWS is, AWS is uh, Amazon servers, I believe. And so if you get kicked off of Amazon servers, you're fucked. Mm, I can imagine. Like, in the United States, you have to have access to Amazon servers or you're fucked. Okay. And so he's basically saying Twitter kicked Trump off and then Amazon servers kicked Trump off. Because basically everything is passing on the internet is passing through Amazon servers. Think of it like that. Okay, here we go. Take Parler off their services and being removed from the App Store. And I think it um, opened a gate that I'm not proud of at all. It, it felt wrong to me and, and I was always searching for a different solution, but I just did not come up with a solution within that structure. And I, I could not figure it out. And I don't know, like personally, it was heartbreaking. Um, all, all of these actions that we took and, and actions that we didn't take as well. I grew up as a punk. I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to build a company. I never wanted to be a CEO. What, uh, fuck you. I don't care. <laughs> but 
it was the path to grow Twitter. And I had to learn what I had to learn. And in that, I learned what I had forgotten as well. What I'd forgotten about what I loved about the internet and why I'm here in the first place. I believe the it. internet? How about liberty and justice and freedom? Yeah. I don't buy it. You're not buying it? No. No, I'm not buying that at all. How can you say how can you sit there and say, well, I'm anti-establishment. I you know, I used to be punk. Like this is so like, you know, it wasn't a great decision. You were the CEO at the time. Like surely like you're as high as you can go. Like you can you can say, like, look, listen, I don't think it's a good idea. Blah 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 blah. But then it was like, well, we had to make that decision. He literally he just basically said he basically said nothing, in my view. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing what that Irish he did. He didn't did. say anything. But let me let me just let me make some shit up here in defense of him, <laughs> just for a second. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Donald Trump was a, th which is the crazy because he was the biggest peacetime president I think we've had in my lifetime. But Donald Trump is a threat. He's going to cause World War Three. He's going to spread um, disease. Um, he hates. Um, uh, uh, um, everyone south of the border he hates black people he's anti-semitic he's a racist he is the downfall mm. of america we have to in in um and he's so popular on twitter we have to take that ability for him to talk away i'm i'm guessing that's what he was being told maybe may i don't know like maybe maybe it was his viewpoint and it, and he's changed and uh, he's realized after obviously the musk takeover and everything he's realized actually that's that wasn't a that wasn't that wasn't great that wasn't a great move olivia pushes back and says well okay sevi what about the taliban and porn oh let's leave them what about i don't know if you yeah, guys have heard recently point. but instagram has been caught for allowing um child pornography rings and child um uh, exploitation rings to exist on through instagram hashtag, through hashtags yeah. on instagram yeah yeah, when, we'll, when we couldn't like hashtag maskless. Yeah, that's but it. You could, but you could <laughs> hashtag diddler. Yeah, that's so bad. That's so bad. It's it's such a good point. Listen, if you believe in free speech, if you are anti-establishment, as you so say you are, if you are punk, then surely the the stance, the moral stance, is you keep them on. You keep you keep both the Taliban and Trump on. Surely that's the stance. Obviously, Taliban are, are awful. There's nothing that I, that I agree with there, obviously. Um, as long as there's no incitement, I mean, I don't get it. Or if you want to be, if you want to make a statement, ban both. Okay. I, I don't agree with banning Trump personally. I just think it's nuts. I think, it was, I think it's just hey, it so was nuts. bad. It, is it was nuts. so I bad. I think it's so bad too. He didn't Why even didn't incite. He... They say he incited. I didn't hear that at all. And that was Mean, from oh, someone. Oh, January 6th? Yeah. I, oh, I yeah, didn't, yeah. I didn't... Complete bullshit, dude. I went back so, and read the yeah. entire transcripts from ABC News, our liberal station here. It's He actually said the opposite. He said, let's march peacefully. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. January 6th is complete Pe peacefully bullshit. Peacefully and patriotically. Um, yeah, I, I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm sorry. Like, and th the fact that Jack Dorsey now is coming out and being like, yeah, it was just a wrong decision, man. Like, you know, I'm punk. I'm anti-establishment. This is not right. And you're like, where were you then? <laughs> where was this anti-establishment, quote unquote, punk side of you when this was all going on? To me, I don't buy it. it, it to me, it's just a what guy that's made What could he say that you would buy? What could he say? What if he would be like, holy shit. What did I do? I was asleep at the wheel. I mean, don't forget, Lewis, you're talking to someone who voted for Hillary Clinton. True. And Barack True. Obama. Do you know I what? If he came I'm... out, yeah. if, he, if he came out and he just went, listen, I fucked up. Yeah. I actually advocated for Trump to come off. I made a terrible decision. I act, like just show, just prove some responsibility Just show that, you know, you, you, you done wrong, but don't start pivot and being like, well, you know, I, I'm anti-establishment. It it was wrong at the time, but you know, it was good for Twitter. It wasn't good for Twitter. Like it just caused it caused more divisiveness. And you know, this side, this this Democrat side, always goes on about healing the divide and things like that. You're not going to heal the divide by censoring the president of of the United States. 
um, just because you disagree with him or you don't like him. Like, that's not going to do anything. Um, yeah. How about this? Jack is an intelligent asset. Here we go. Oh, okay. Now, we, now, now we're getting into it. <laughs> have we turned into a right, right, uh, right wing um, lunatic podcast by saying that? Probably. That's you that's did. my fault. Yeah, for having me on, bro. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, is, is there? Do you think that that's um, what would? So let's just assume he for sure he's taught he, he ran the largest he, he wrote he he was the ceo of one of the largest microphones we have on planet earth mm -hmm. can we agree on that mm -hmm. okay he ran one of the largest companies of con where people congregate on planet earth a, a venue the largest coffee shop on planet earth where the most minds congregate yeah would you say he's he's not of course the cia and the fbi and um uh whatever that shit you guys have where james bond hangs out in the uk um mi5 yeah yeah you had of course they've spoke to him of course that doesn't make him an intelligence asset though right of course he has interactions with these people it depends if there was a transaction i guess could there be if well there could was there a, be a there's trans admitted a transaction there's admitted a financial transaction i think um the fbi was paying yeah. millions of dollars to have like 60 people work at twitter i mean it's, it's like not hidden. that's an intelligence yeah okay i would, so, I would so, argue that's yeah so at that point all of twitter is an intelligent asset intelligence asset if you got at, at the time 60 yeah. employees working there at the time i would say yeah um and i think their general counsel was a former uh, uh general counsel at the fbi or something like that now we have a problem yeah big problem okay that's that's right. a big problem if you're if you're if you've made the playground of ideas and where people come together and just hash out disagreements or they post uh, political views or you know it helps bolster like their campaigns if they're running for either mayor or president or prime minister or even just members of parliament or anything you have to have transparency i think is is the is the key and if you then start hiring and f having financial transactions from the fbi to then work for this big um plateau of ideas this playground of ideas this what we call twitter and then you're you're able to censor certain ideas just because you have a bias like let's like, let's say i i um Let's say I ran Twitter and the FBI came to me and said, look, listen, Lewis, like, you know, you've got the, one of the biggest platforms in the world. We need some employees in here because, you know, we need some form of control. It's getting a bit out of hand. People are, there's so many anti-vaxxers on this, on this platform. There's so many pro-vaxxers that you don't like, Lewis, on this, on this platform. We need to, uh, we need to curb this. We need, we need some sort of mitigation, some control. And they say, we'll pay you um 10 million or something just a ballpark figure 10 million if i took that transaction you then i would argue you then become an intelligence asset like what sean said um because because you're bought and paid for then by by the big intelligence services so yeah for me that's that's um more than bad <laughs> so i'm glad that that's not well, if that is the case now, I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. I can't say, but I'm guessing it's an, a big improvement since Dorsey. Uh, James Baker, uh, former uh, government official at the Department of Justice, who served as general counsel for the Federal Bureau of Investigation and later served as deputy general counsel of Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. Before being fired by Elon Musk in 2022. Yeah. So That's, basically, we don't we don't like a guy working for the FBI and then pivoting over to uh, no. But so. like our ministers in um, in the UK, um, oh gosh, not ministers. Um, oh, who are they? Not seventy seventh brigade. Um, gosh, uh, some a bit like the FBI, but in the in in the UK. Um, were caught spying on dissenters of lockdowns and it's it come out as a huge um sort of big scandal that they were SIS, spying on secret intelligence service it could be it could actually okay. be that spying on lockdown distance 
and even high profile journalists like Peter Hitchens and people like that actually spying on them just because if they posted something on Twitter or on social media that goes against the lockdowns during the time, um, they have their communication spied on. It's it's nuts. It was it was just a nuts time. And for that to be a thing is so worrying. That's so worrying in a supposed liberal democracy, right? Um, so when you have the biggest player like Twitter having even the FBI <laughs> at such a high ranking position, that's alarm bells to me. Going back to that first video that I showed you, I showed mm. that to a friend of mine yesterday who's like the most hardcore liberal person ever. Cool. And we were sitting down on a bench, two old people. <laughs> My kids were off playing in the distance. There were seagulls flying on the beach. Yeah. And I said, I, I want you to watch this and tell me what you see. And they saw it the way those people saw it. No way. Yeah. And then I said, can I tell you the way I see it? And then I told them the way I saw it. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're right. And I, then I go, and then they turned to me and they said, Hey, I don't really want appreciate being you calling me a liberal anymore. I'm not a Democrat. <laughs> like, Oh, you're not. And they're like, no, I don't want to be put in a bucket anymore. And that's kind of, I was kind of impressed. That's kind of yeah. the first step, right? Cause it's yeah. really hard to say you've been on the team that, that, sure. that, um, had 4 million black slaves, uh, supports pedophilia and, mm -hmm. um, uh, forces kids to take drugs just to, for starters. Yeah, it's really yeah. hard to admit that. I'll tell you what. Um, right. So, so you kind of don't jump to the other team, but you're you're tiptoeing out of your room. You're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I thought we were like <laughs> hugging trees and trying to save the earth. This is the problem because um, because of social media, um, because politics now is so polarized and tribalistic that to admit that you are wrong or that you could be wrong or that something that you supported was or could be wrong it can affect your social life now. Like that's how, that's how bad it's gotten. Like if you say, listen, I actually quite like Trump. Like that can ruin relationships. That can you'll ruin friendships. Job. You'll lose your job. You lose, you'll your, lose job. your job. Yeah, you'll exactly. Lose your job. Yeah. That, and that's why yeah. I think a lot of people are struggling on that side of the aisle to actually turn around and say, do you know what? I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to work out whether it's ego or, or narcissism or anything like that. I, but in defense, I think I'm in defense in, let me say mm. this. If you would have said in world, if you would have said, let's pick Germany, World War II Germany. If you were okay. to say that I didn't like Hitler, you would lose your yeah, job. You'd be, too. You'd be oh, yeah. More than that. You'd be you'd be offed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'd be offed. I think that'd be a bit a bit more extreme, I would say. I would argue. So, but it, 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 here's the thing what they actually think is happening on the right is actually mm. happening on the left but mm. but if i actually thought I, I don't want any i don't want any liberal people around around my family or talking to my kids like i'm just as bad as they are right do, do you right. know what i'm saying like I think um, I, I had a friend come over to my house the other uh, when when my, my son's eight now. My son was five. And my other mm. sons were three, and they were over at my house, and mm. we were all we were you know, we had been partying and we were drinking and we were watching some UFC fights or something. And everyone's cool. in the living room, and we, it just and and this uh, lady says, "Hey, do you mind if I talk to your kid?" And I'm right. like, "No, not not at all." Right. Like, okay. That, that, like that was even a weird question. And so she sits okay. down on the couch and she picks up uh, my five-year-old son and she says, do you know what gay is? And, and I'm like, so I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, Avi, go, you guys go play in the other room. And then she's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, why are you talking to me about – why are you talking to my kids about that? And she said, Would you, my kids have a gay um, – my brother's gay and my kids have a gay uncle. I'm like, cool, totally cool. I have no problem with that. We, we have it's gay friends too. Oh. We have gay friends too. It has nothing to do yeah. with being gay. Why? But you don't walk up to a five-year-old. Awkward, dude. It was it was bizarre. It was bizarro world. Why would you? I don't. Drugs I don't get. The, you feel not, the need to go no and drugs and alcohol, people. <laughs> Marijuana and alcohol are the devil. No. Um. <laughs> so she went straight to the wow. place that I was trying to hide something from my kids. Right. And and like, but but I don't I don't want that. Same thing with the um the pride flag in front of the, the elementary school, K through yeah. five year olds through twelve year olds. Mm. 
I don't want I don't want my kids I, I don't want my kids put in a situation where that's being pressed on them. Sure. Like with anything, you know, yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't want um that American so, flag is being pressed on them in front of the school. I get it. I'm glad it's being pressed on them. Yeah, because that's the flag that unifies everyone, right? Right. In the country. That should unify everyone. Obviously, there are people that don't. And when they get way. older, they can push against it or, and they can also accept the gay flag. But there's a time and a place. Yeah. And so uh, I feel just as guilty as them. On one hand, I feel like we're saying here Twitter shouldn't or, or you shouldn't fire someone if they like Trump. But then on the other hand, I wouldn't hire someone who's um, espousing, espousing um, uh, genital mutilation for kids. Sure. Sure. Yeah, there's obviously there's context, there's lines. Um, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't oh, want to yeah. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Of course not. Of course not. You're not a hip, hypocrite in my eyes at all. Um well, that's yeah, we're on the same a, team. That's because we're on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you could say that. Um, but uh, the thing is though, dude, like you get situations like it's all about context, it's all about specific situations, and you have to make a case like for individual things it's it's hard to just do a blank statement when suddenly you get a situation like yours arise right you know when someone grabs your five-year-old kid and says do you know what gay is like yeah it's a, it's a bit like hang on a minute that's that's not your child like at the end of the day it's not your child what are you doing um and it i think it's worse when it's the schools because teachers are, have a responsibility and on top of that five years old like just let kids be kids like kids kids when when i was like 5 or 6 or whatever i didn't know what all of that was like i couldn't conceptualize any of that it was just you know i wanted to be spider man like let right, me be right, spider man right, right, and that's right. it <laughs> um like there's a time and a place for adult conversations when they're like 15 16 like you want to have like the birds and the bees chat and things like that and relationships uh, I believe it should be the parents. I don't think the school should have any say in that, especially with what the curriculum is showing. But my point, though, is, is that what about not hiring those people? Who, so um, I, I think it was in Wisconsin. I just looked it up, but I can't I can't find it. But either in Wisconsin, they tried to or they just passed a law. So we have laws in this country. You can't discriminate against someone for their uh, sexual orientation in the workplace. So sure. if you, if I find out that um, you have a vagina and that you prefer vagina sitting on your face over penis, then right. um, I can't fire you for it. Great. Okay. That would be fucking ridiculous to fire someone for that. For but sure. they're trying to add pedophiles to that list. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. And I, I can't do that. No, no. I, I can't be friends with pedophiles. I can't have, I can't, I can't, no. I don't want them in the work. So I'm being that I'm, do you see what I'm saying? Those, yeah. that those people think that way about Trump. Like they fucking kicked him off of Twitter. It's, it's nuts. And although it's, I think that's bullshit, I do think you should kick pedophiles off of Twitter. Of course. Of course. Um, God, it's weird. Uh, it's like I'm almost questioning my own sanity. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the world we live in man it's that's why you know it, it you have to double think now or, or at almost everything because it's like because of because of how nuts it is that's the problem i mean it's always been to change it to a preference that's always been like a thing since the 70s they've been really trying to push i say they uh, it's usually um bureaucratic elites top down um trying to push the the change to to preference as opposed to mental illness uh, when it comes to um, pedophilia but yeah it's just it's so fucked how we how we've gotten to this point um and you know do you hear about like maps you hear about that yeah i refuse to use the term it's just fucking insane anytime i see it i just i slip in i i, I put in the word pedophile <laughs> you know what i'm saying nonce yeah you heard the I, word I, nonce no, what's nonce? <laughs> That's like the British word for pedophilia or pedophile. Oh yeah, yeah. I just switch it because I because I don't <laughs> want to. So I'm not interested in softening the. It's the same reason why. It, I, it's it's the flag. It's the gay flag. They they try to call it pride or they're trying to soften 
uh, w- what it is. No, it's it's not. It, if you're gay, it's because you have a cock and you want cock in your mouth. And if you're straight, it's you have a cock and you want to put it in vagina. Like I, I'm not mm. I'm not interested in using these other words that signify things in order to soften the reality of their situations. Sure. Like, you, you know, and, and maps is one of them. Fuck you. The minor yeah. attracted persons. How about fuck off? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's all of these things that, um, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stupid. Um, the, 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 the senior girls hanging out at the high school, um, uh, on the, at the liquor store here and they have their fucking tits pushed up and they're wearing their asses hanging out and they're riding their fucking bikes to the, to the beach. And uh, I'm a 51 year old man in order for civilization to work. You can't look at them. It's just the way it fucking is. And right. am I saying that they're not fucking attractive and it's not fucking crazy? No, it's like, yeah, but they're fucking 17. Civilization has to work. You have to fall within the fucking guidelines. Fucking do it in order to like m- make it work. Hmm. Um, it, it, it's, it's not a, we, we have to have a line somewhere. It's the same thing with like, I'm totally capable of driving safely at 75. Not everyone right. is. We, we, we fucking have met at 65. Mm. you know what i mean yeah you, sure ma- like make things um make things work and if you're gonna break those rules um you're toast you should be toast you should be For- toast. forgive me asking this. did you say 75 75 yeah miles per hour oh, okay cool yeah oh you, you were thinking thought, thought, no yeah yeah no sorry 75 no, is good 75 yeah. is good. okay yeah that's cool but I mean, there's tons of people who should not be. I mean, I don't know how it is in the UK, but we have tons of people here who should just not be driving. <laughs> oh yeah, likewise. Street. Oh yeah, trust me, trust me. I think I think you should reach a certain age where you have to retake your test every like two years or something. You get to a certain age and you go right. It's time for your two year sort of test just to see if you can uh <laughs> yeah and, can and it's the exact opposite here in the states like i haven't taken a driver's test i'm 51 i haven't since i got my license at 16 i think once at 18 i retook it and now they just send you a new one mm. yeah yeah this is a common theme i hear over and over and over sure and I struggle with this one. I always sure. push back when I say that it, um, it's how the media distracted the world. So mm-hmm. um, the Titan tragedy, and this is on mm-hmm. your Instagram account. Can you tell me how this works? Sure. So I hear this, I hear the term distraction bounded around a lot as well. Um, and there are genuine distractions or there are just new stories that you can look at and then you can look at another story like you you're not necessarily distracted so when it comes to this particular case there was overwhelming evidence that i try and lay out as best as i can in this sort of mini documentary about how the media so the the u.s navy and the coast guards knew that an explosion slash implosion happened on the Sunday, hours after they lost contact with this. So they knew already that they were fucked, basically, that they they were probably dead, okay, these, these guys. And so the media took it, ran with it, but then started drumming up the idea of, like, a countdown for, like, the oxygen, right? I remember and they that, str- yep. I remember they that. strung that along over the days when there's clear evidence to suggest that the Biden administration, the U S Navy and the coast guards already knew. Now I know I was speaking to some military um, operations like expert on the phone about this after I released it. And I thought, fuck, I should have spoken to you before I made this, but he explained how the guys that I show the interviews with when they're like, he, they, they say nothing. If you watch it, and they're giving a statement about what's happened. They're not saying anything. And he was explaining this to me on the phone. And he said that they would have known at the time that it's it was it was it. That was it. There was no chance. You had been that deep. You heard. You lost contact. And then you you pick up this signal that there's been an explosion slash implosion. That's it. Like there's. It's just a case of 
grabbing the debris. Um, obviously, we live in times where the media can take a story, and if there is something else that's going on that week, we know that the the, the legacy media are in bed with with the Biden administration. We know that you can see the patterns. When Biden was elected, even the BBC ran a story trying to claim that Biden had a stutter. <laughs> Biden doesn't have a stutter. He had surgery, wasn't it, in his brain? And he almost died. Now... He had like an aneurysm or something. He's started. He's broken. Yeah, he's broken. He's completely yeah. broken. And yeah. they tried to say, oh, he just has a stutter. And you could see the manipulation um, from the media covering for Biden. We've seen this since day dot. Um, I saw this happen with this story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just as you know, my liberal friends don't know he's gorked. How they don't know because they, it's the media they watch. They don't know. They don't know. Oh, dude, so you see, that's okay. the power of it. So yeah, that yeah. that proves it even more. Yeah. yeah, because they've they've managed to selectively edit the clips, right? So that he strings perfect sentences after like the 80th go. Right. Um. So I saw this and I sat there watching it and I saw this. There's something not right about this. And I thought, right, well, do I speak about it and look nuts? <laughs> Or do I make the case and try to get people to understand my way of thinking that it's quite clear to see that the media took that story, heightened it on purpose, coincidentally around the same time that Hunter Biden was going through legal challenges in court, um, which was the tip of the iceberg, by the way. There's so much stuff. I mean, we could talk about the laptop and things like that. But from I think it was like gun charges and like fraud, which is nothing in comparison. How about the um, of giving paintings to his daughter, bullshit paintings for um, child support, not letting his daughter take his last name, uh, the the cocaine in the West Wing? Uh, yeah, and, there like, is so much corruption. You, the Ukraine. $10 the $10 million, the WhatsApp uh, release text of the, of the $10 million that he got from the Chinese. Dude, Ukraine, 10% is... to the big guy. Yes. Like, yes. dude, there's so much. There's so much. This is the tip of the iceberg. But what they like to do, the media, as I've noticed, they cover for him. And now, sure, my mate pointed out, well, hang on a minute, CNN posted about it, um, um, MSNBC posted about Hunter Biden that same week, blah, 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 like, I get that. But you look at the coverage, you look at how it's covered, you look at you look at um, the time frame of what's covered. It's not. It, it was basically like a, okay, well, we have to talk about this, so we're going to do one segment here, but then we're going to do three segments on this submarine um, disaster. And when you, you notice think things... They just chase the ratings. You don't think they just chase the ratings? They you think do. There, it's there it's a combination. Some, so there is some sort of meeting where the CEO of, uh, I don't know if you know these stations in this in the US, but Fox, ABC, NBC, and CBS, they yep. are like, hey, let's run this instead of... Sure. Sure, absolutely. We know that... Um, we know that... Uh, uh, news outlets like Fox and CNN, um, they have they have uh, certain investors, I believe, and I think they they're controlled by the same um, entrepreneurs or or the same same guys. I'm saying this so poorly. Um, no one will but... see this. Only, there's only 150 people watching. Don't worry. This is this, <laughs> uh, the Seven Podcast, where Lewis uh, Brackpool practices his uh, f first runs at news stories. Well. <laughs> That's it. I'm basically Biden trying to do a newsreel. Because um, <laughs> you've been up all night reporting. <laughs> pretty much. Um, my point is, is you, you can chase the ratings, sure. But there comes a point where you start to notice patterns within the media and how they operate. And if there's a story that, they, that their guy, quote unquote, uh, isn't looking so good, you couldn't put out a story. You have to put out a story, obviously, otherwise people will notice, of course. But it's the amount. It's the coverage. It's not wall to wall, right? And so with this submersible, it was, it was, oh, it, it was the perfect ratings. It was, you know, we, we'll spin the story that that they're trapped and that the oxygen timer has like two days in it, or or, or like a day and a half, and that we're going to string this out as much as possible. Um, just so that people are hooked and then people on TikTok started getting involved and was like making making all these stories and drumming up all this um hysteria on whether there's there's a survivability 
um, that whether there's survivability here, right? So I sat and I saw this and I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak about this, um, and I'm gonna try and piece it together. I used um, Human Events, I think Jack Posobiec, his uh, his channel, and they were talking about how Biden had already knew and the U.S. Navy already knew by Sunday that it was it, that was it. But um, them, the media, almost sort of told a white lie and then drummed up yeah, this they hysteria. Did. They did. It was a white lie. Yeah. And, and said, look, there's hope, there's survivability. And it got people talking. It got people hooked. And it got people so fixated that if you went on social media like TikTok uh, or, or any of the others, all you'll see is this submersible. And yeah. we know that the Biden administration use, utilizes these platforms like TikTok to push out messages, whether it be about the vaccine, whether it be about lockdowns, or about be about all these these sorts of things. So I noticed the pattern, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to take a punt at this. I'm going to make a little, you know, documentary. It took me like two days, uh, it's good. just constantly. Thank you, dude. I appreciate that. And um, yep, it's good. And I thought, okay, well, here's the evidence. Let me put it to the people. And if someone disagrees with me, fine absolutely fine like i do not mind that's that's you know if you've got a hypothesis on whether it could be false fine but after speaking to um a military operations expert about it he went through the whole thing he gave me he sent me like a five minute voice note just explaining about all of it after he watched it and he, he explained um how the coast guards when they're giving their statements they weren't actually saying anything um and the thing is, I don't like to use the word distraction a lot because a lot of people use that in order to say, well, they're just not covering what I want them to cover because that's what a lot of people do now, right? It's our bias kicking in. It's saying, well, the news isn't covering what I want them to cover, so they're distracting you with something else. It's an easy rabbit hole to fall down. But when there's, a, when there's an actual distraction where it's like, okay, there's a new story going on this week that it's going to really affect a campaign or it's going to affect um the president or it's going to like and they're in in sort of bed with them yeah they can utilize this and they can spin it so that that it's sensationalist to the point of if you open your phone that's all you see um and it was the perfect it was it was the perfect concoction of um sensationalism and yeah i saw it i saw the opportunity to to speak about it and i thought you know, I'm not just going to sit here and be quiet. I'm going to try and do my best to... And look, if I'm wrong, that's absolutely fine. And I'll admit that I'm wrong. I, I'm not one of those weirdos that just delete something when I've said something incorrect and then move on. I think that's disingenuous. I'd rather just say, look, I'll hold my hands up. I was wrong. That, you know, let's let's address why it's wrong. This is the correct reason why. Let's uh, Let's now piece together the next bit you know what, what um that part that part where you mentioned and i'd forgotten that i had heard that that we actually knew we heard the explosion i never heard yeah. that like reported in the media like you had to dig for that yeah yeah the u.s navy like admitted yeah admitted it. but then they but then it came out days later so they already knew and I think the, the DHS leaked to the Rolling Stone, and I, I explained this. The, D, the DHS leaked to the Rolling Stone that the Biden administration and the US Navy knew. And the Rolling Stone has been like a big forefront of defending the Biden administration. Oh, the Rolling Stone is a shit rag. So bad. And um and it's just it's just a strange coincidence that What's it happened to be So sorry, Lewis, go ahead. I was just saying, um, it's a strange coincidence that the DHS leaked, quote unquote, this information to the Rolling Stone. So <laughs> what what do you think what's going on with um, the relationship with the media and Biden? It seems like in the last year, it's just open season on them, like they protected him. Yeah. And, and now it's just like they'll do like every day. It seems like there's a bad story coming out about them. You yeah, that's you think some, the order's been given. Okay, no longer protect the Bidens. It's open season. I don't know. I think it's just too difficult to hide. 
I think it's so difficult to hide. I mean, you look at you look I at his rating. I thought it's concerned he's going to run again. I thought it's like, hey, we don't want him to run again. Could be. Into- that's a good that's a good way to look at it. Absolutely. I didn't I didn't think of it in that way. And they would rather have someone like Kamala Harris um, anybody, step up. Anybody. They wouldn't have RFK on though, I would say. I say they they would avoid him like the, like the plague. Um let me propose this to you one. about let me propose this to you about RFK. Go for it. Democrat, liberal, uh, when he speaks about the uh, vaccine, he's like, okay, the study over here shows that um, uh, 82% of the people who got the vaccine were injured and only 1% were healed. And if you look at the Amish communities, they don't have any uh, autism. And if you look at what happened in Australia, um, they said that the vaccine was working, although 99% of the people were vaccinated and they had the highest death rate. And, and like he points at all of these facts, right? And he's talking yeah. and he's like, oh, you know, only 131 p- kids have died of measles. And uh, why are we uh, administering 2 million um, uh, vaccines a year for this when the error rate of kids getting killed is 275 and the net loss? And he's giving you the numbers, right? Mm. Yeah. And the, they don't like you, that. and the second you ask him about affirmative action or climate change. Yes. Yes. It goes on goes, another. The yeah, shit goes, goes, the the shit goes full liberal talk. This affirmative action is a complex issue with nuances that don't necessarily um, can be explained so easily because we need to make sure that the earth is a place where humans are hospitable, uh, uh, can walk into campus. And I'm just like, (laughs) what the fuck did you just say? (laughs) And you got to go over, you got to go somewhere else where someone's like, yeah, Chinese students have to get 273 points higher on their SAT um, than uh, black students in order to get into Harvard. Also, mm. uh, six foot nine black guys uh, also make it on the basketball team better. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can start like giving numbers and facts. And but for some reason, as soon as it comes to affirmative action or climate change, he goes into the fucking ether. Yes, he goes. I'll tell feel, you, I'll... he goes into feel good land again. He goes. He turns back into a liberal. I'm like, well, dude, what are you doing? I'll tell you why I think this might be. So. Obviously, you have to remember he's running as a Democrat, not an independent. So obviously, he's got Democrat donors and backers. So there might be a line. There might be a point because it's too obvious for RFK to turn around and say, you know what, the vaccine, you know, it might actually be pretty good. And it's like, well, you've just joined the Democratic Party and now you're running for president. It's it's quite clearly obvious. Or maybe that's genuinely his position. You know, I just I can't work it out. The end of the day, he's running a, as a Democrat, and he's the Democrats. Been, he's always been against um, vaccines for like yes, like, he, like so he, he cannot change that position. Yeah, and he's done the math on it, and he's always been uh, suppressed. He he was also kicked off of Twitter, by the way, by the yeah. Biden administration. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I posted on his thing because he had an interview with Jordan Peterson recently, where he was talking about renewable energy, and I posted a comment on his video on Instagram, and I said. It's not renewable energy, though, is it, forever? It's not, because wind turbines last about 15 to 20 years, and the blades are made of fiberglass because you can't recycle them. And I said, nuclear is the way. And um, that got a lot of praise. I was really quite shocked, like, considering it's his timeline. A lot of praise on that. You posted that I, on his Instagram account? Yeah. I I, I don't know if it's, if it's the top comment, but um, it got quite a lot of likes. Um, and... It was interesting to me because when I when I hear him talk about climate change, um, I understand when he says, you know, NGOs and um, corporations are sort of weaponizing the narrative of climate change because they are to whip up fear uh, because it's profitable. You know, you can only sell profit if, if they fear it. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, it's not free energy forever, and it certainly isn't a renewable source of energy. Wind turbines last around 15 to 20 years, and the blades can't be recycled. Nuclear is the way. Um, Obviously, it's stirred up quite a... (laughs) Oh, look at you. (laughs) Rushing to my support. (laughs) Love it. But um, the thing is, I like RFK. I I I think he seems cool. I'd love to sit down and have a conversation with him. I'd love to do an interview with him and just, you know, pick his brain on all of these subjects. And, you know, he's an interesting character. He's an interesting person. But the, obviously, because he's a Democrat. What about this bullshit? <laughs> doing no, no. it with jeans on. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, 
getting in shape for my debates with President Biden as president, I will restore America as the global example of health and well-being, not through pills or syringes. Listen, motherfucker, you're juiced to the gills. <laughs> this fucking guy is on so much testosterone, it's not even funny. I don't have a problem with it. Don't get me wrong. Practice what you preach. But, dude, yeah. his lat goes down to his fucking waist. Wow. I, I mean, thought it was the jeans. I thought you were going to comment that he's doing it in jeans. No, no, no. I love him. I that he's got that body's incredible. Look how hard his nipples are. This guy <laughs> is on the testosterone. It's so weird yeah. that he would write that without pills and needles. Yeah. It's like, yeah. dude. I don't know. I don't know. I have I've not seen. I mean, it is a bit sus that he's got a, a body like that for his age. Oh my um, god, he's a brick shit house. Hey, and yeah, you know what? He probably has to be on testosterone also medically because of something, whatever's going on with his voice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, by the way, just on a complete side note, uh, um, uh, Americans gained on average 29 pounds during COVID. This mm. single fact, I used to drive this home, you have to understand is the single reason why the lockdowns were unmitigated disaster and why the, you, the world will never recover. Uh, it, it, not in my lifetime. You, no one's going to... On average, the average American put on 29 pounds in those two years. We will never recover from that, and the economic disaster and the loss of days of life from that are, are unprecedented. It's worse than World War II, and just in terms of our sure human hours of life lost. Like, that's mm. 10 years off of everyone's life in the United States. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's absolute bonkers. <laughs> bonkers. How... Did you yeah. put on weight during COVID, Lewis? You look you don't look you look like you're in good shape. You don't look like you're fat. Appreciate Are you fat? that. You're not fat, right? I'm not fat, no. Uh -huh. I I'd like to say that I'm not fat. Maybe I maybe I do think it some days when I drink a load of water and have a big meal, but no, I don't think I'm fat. That's but, just uh, the security the media's put on us. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's all the magazines. Um but yeah, I look I, nothing. I, I look different. nothing like RFK. I, if I took my shirt off, I look. Sevi, you're not on TRT. You're jacked. I look like a fucking muffin. I'm telling you, <laughs> I have broad shoulders and big titties that allow the shirt to hang down past <laughs> my fucking rolls. I am a fucking uh, marshmallow. Yeah, never taken testosterone. Don't know what that. I don't know what that would be like, to be honest, and especially like, you know, RFK being in his seventies. Is he 70 it, it, something? 75? Is that what he is? I mean, look I at him. So. He's a brick shit house. Look at Dude, him. Dude, he's fucking huge. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't want him to punch me in the face. No thanks. Um, this po nature has a way of reminding you that testosterone is king, Robert F. Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Slap that on a billboard. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely on test. 100%. But I like him. I think he's cool. I think he's cool. For a Democrat, you know, I'm very impressed. However, the affirmative action stuff, um, no, can't get on board with that. Um, and the climate sh change stuff, I get that he talks about the narrative, but I think he believes the whole man-made climate change, which I personally don't. I think it's natural. I think climate change is a natural phenomenon that happens and is like a cycle. And if you look at the, um, if you look at the data, people say, oh, the the planet's like warming up and then you you have to just ask them but when 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 is this data from uh, and then you zoom out and uh it's it's like when obama takes like the unemployment rate and it's like it's down and then so they'll zoom in and they'll go look unemployment's down when really if you zoom it out and it's like you know all oh, over the right. place yeah in, in a larger timeline you see it's up yeah exactly um and that's what a lot of people do with the climate change debate they'll grab the data, manipulate it, and they'll just look at one section when really you have to blow it out and look at the whole bigger picture. And actually, we're cooling. That's uh, that's the the gist of it. We're actually cooling as a, as a planet. So all of this talk about that we're heating up is actually, yeah, bollocks. You, you'll never be allowed in China with that kind of talk. It's true. It's true. Um <laughs> I don't like the word affirmative action the same way I don't like maps. Affirmative action just yeah. means let's use racism to get into school. Yeah. And yeah. that that and so when I just hear RFK or anyone talking about that kind of stuff and not laying it out for what it really is, I'm yeah. I'm totally open for the discussion too. It's sure. not that I'm against it. I'm just against the 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 way it's being doled out. 
if you want to sure. find a way to make it so that people who um uh if you if you want to make so so in, in my state we have something called the University of California and we have a massive school system and mm -hmm. we're around all of these schools and junior colleges and there's just education everywhere if you want to mm -hmm. make it so a child or a, a person can have better access or try to think of ways to get access of schooling to people mm. who don't have necessarily the same kind of access that someone maybe in California does, but maybe mm. someone in Iowa needs or something like that. I'm open to it. If you want to do it based on skin color, I'm willing to listen to your argument, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be but difficult. It's going to be difficult because what you're saying is, is that um, Lewis can't get in because he's white and uh, Hung Lee can't get in because he's Chinese and Abu uh, uh, Zanari can't get in because he's Indian. And it's like, I just who'd have thought I, who'd have thought like <laughs> hiring people based on skin color was all of a sudden it's okay <laughs> in 2023 like that's that's acceptable i i just don't i don't see how that's productive and like i was watching um amala akpanobi and her um who's a good friend actually she's really really good at what she does um and she was talking about um quote unquote affirmative action and she explains that um <laughs> she explains how um, this push for affirmative action is going to actually lead to more racism because there will be people uh, around the school or like higher education going around saying, were you, were you allowed in here based on just race or was it merit? Like, and then it will get people it's like that in the workplace, like dude. That. It's already yeah. like that in the workplace. And it's that's already, bad. Every, everyone, everyone looks at the, everyone looks at the women, the gay people and the black people as you got in here because, not because you're qualified. And, and that's that, and, bad. Oh, you shouldn't horrible. be thinking that. It's nobody I nobody agree. should be I thinking agree. that. I and agree. but the, the problem is is this push for for this for quotas for diversity hire, DEI and ESG and all of this stuff. The push for this is actually making uh, society go backwards in its stances. And it's actually viewing people in a different light, which is not good. So it's, it's, it's ironic reinforcing that, racism. It's once it again, is. the mechanism they're using, the good guy, the mechanism the good guys are using to help people is yeah. backfiring. Of course. And, and well, the sooner we say that, the sooner we say, look, it's based on merit. You know, everyone has equal opportunities. You just need to work to get to this point. You need to study. You need to, you need to really knuckle down and and if you want a higher education if you want this ability sure economic factors we can go we can have a conversation about that of course but if we're talking about grades if we're talking about um getting to that point of higher higher education it needs to be a level playing field and propping up um people from just a certain community over others is racist that's not that's not good that's not good. It puts it puts people at a disadvantage. And of course, um, let's say let's say it doesn't matter about the skin color, but let's say you propped up someone of a certain certain race in in higher education, and they didn't get the grades that everyone else did. They were just propped up because of skin color. It doesn't matter which skin color. They're going to fall behind than everyone else because they didn't get the 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 grades that everyone else did. They're, they're, they'll flag behind. They'll really struggle um, within higher education. So it's not necessarily about mindset from other people. Oh, were you hired because of you know affirmative action? It's actually the studying as well. It's the grades. It's it's the amount of um, work ethic you have from being hired. It's it's you have to you have to realize that it's only going to make things so much more difficult um, for that person by just hiring it based on based on race and that's that's just terrible it's all you know, just it's terrible the, 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 i watched a bunch of interviews with people liberals on the left um this past you know two weeks and they mm. all agree with you which is so weird they'll yeah. say stuff like i got into college based on my grades i went to harvard and people had the people think that i got in because i was black it's like yeah, that yeah. they've set up that parameters yeah. for yeah, people to like, think that, and it's like, it, and yet they're supporting affirmative action. It's like, uh, yeah, doesn't make sense. 
Um, uh, Sarah Cox, uh, my favorite, um, my my favorite uh, um, uh, place to purchase peptides. Do you know what peptides are? Remind me. I, I don't know what they are either. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping you did. Uh, peptides are uh, amino acids. <laughs> Um, that your body uh, uh, produces naturally, or you can get them from California peptides. You can hit the um, QR code there. Basically, I have this injury in my bicep, and mm -hmm. I've been shooting peptides that I got um, from her website into my arm, and she does sponsor the podcast. She has for many, many years. Amazing. And, um, and anyway, Sarah, That's thank cool. you. Sarah, I owe you a call. I, I need to talk to you about the uh, – I'm going to call you about going to the CrossFit Games this year um, very shortly. When, the, when this show's over. And thank you for the mm -hmm. 1999. This <laughs> is... Um, the, when, uh, I have people who uh, watch the show who are like, hey, Sevon, stop acting like um, uh, pedophilia and sex and gay stuff is being shoved down people's throats. You're so one-sided and you're biased. And what's interesting is in this country, you're not allowed to like talk about religion at school, right? Mm. You can't be like, hey, kids, look, here's the Ten Commandments that, um, uh, in a value system that's being offered to you by uh, the Christian church. Like you couldn't even mm. say it in a non – let's discuss today whether – what is Christianity. You can't even do any of that. It's you terrible. can't be like, hey, let's read Job and study it. it and, mm. and you won't find it anywhere. I, in, in my 13 years of going to school, I had one teacher, one class where we read Job. My sophomore mm. year, my teacher said, hey, I don't even care if you guys report me. And we read it. It was awesome. Yeah. And I'm not even a Christian. Mm. Um, but how is it that there's no Christianity anywhere in our schools? And everywhere I look, I see this stuff. This stuff really is being forced down our kids' throats. Here, here we go. This is from uh, Lewis Brackpool's uh, Instagram account. Here we go. To apologize in advance for any distressing content in this video, lesson plans in schools across Britain have been leaked, which has found graphic material being shown to kids as young as nine years old. I want to warn you, some of this is very distressing, but I have to read it out. Schools across Britain are teaching children that from birth until the age of one, babies can experience pleasurable sensations by touching their gen- Pre-compulsory RSE lessons are giving homework to kids about master. They're teaching that girls as young as 12 can find pleasure from anal, vaginal. anal sex. That's being taught to kids in schools. Yeah. Yeah. They're teaching kids that people can change their sex from being a man to being a woman. Holy They're also shit. teaching that some non-binary humans are neither men nor women, and that men with male Y chromosomes can actually become women. What's worse is they show images, and if I have to censor these images to show you what they are showing to children, we have a problem. Parents, you need to get angry. You need to stand up for what's right and say something. You can't allow for this to be happening in schools. Get organized, meet with other parents, find out what your child is being taught at school and do something about it. I want to apologize. In a so just to be super clear for anyone who's listening who, who doesn't um, uh, understand the stance, and Lewis, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, sexualizing kids is bad. Very uh, bad. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it. You basically want to let kids blossom at at a, at a certain pace, and if you sexualize them too early, um, we know we have we see people like that all around us with all sorts of fucking disorders. Sure. Uh, James sure. Townsend, Christianity isn't in our kids' school because the powers to to play as if they Christianity isn't in our schools in in. Uh, uh, Christianity, <laughs> Christianity is not in our kids' school because the powers. To be play as if they're like God. Oh yeah, yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. Wow, hundred percent. Yeah, what the fuck is going on? We spoke about this on the last podcast. Well, how the the elites? <laughs> we spoke about how the elites um top down. They're um they see themselves because they've got all this wealth um and all this power because they can change and um and act legislation, even as NGOs, which they're not really allowed to do, but they can influence governments to change policy and to enact their vision. They almost feel like that they are their own gods. 
So that's why I, I think all of them are basically atheist. Like, I think all of them are. But like, not just like, you know, oh, agnostic or whatever. It's like, no, like, like Yuval Noah Harari, you know, that evil dude who like wants AI to rewrite oh, the Bible right, and shit. Right, right. It's fucked. Um, hey, so did yeah. you know that when I put you on the last show, when we spoke, we spoke about your documentary, The World, uh, The um, Great Reset. The Great Reset and the World Economic Forum. Mm. My, my, you, because I said World Economic Forum, my, oh, YouTube yes, video it got has the banner. banner. Yeah, 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 dude. And you've just done it again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you know this, but for two, I lost my big my big Instagram account, and for year for the last two or three years, if you said anything about COVID, you got a banner on your Instagram account, and 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 now it's gone. They're not there anymore. I don't know where they went, but they're and now on YouTube, if you say anything about the Great Reset or the World Economic Forum, they put a banner on there, letting mm. you know people that this shit is real. Like, this isn't like some conspiracy fucking James Bond movie shit. Like, the shit is coming. We are here. Um, why? How, how did this happen, do you think? That's a great question. You know, how, how always... is not everyone like, no, you don't sexualize kids? How is everyone just not? And this is what you're showing. We're not, we're, this proves we're right, right? This is being forced down our kid's throat. So anyone who yeah. says to me, Sevon, you're full of shit, it's not being forced down your kid's throat. It really is being shoved down your kid's throat. It really is. It really is. So that, um, that was an exclusive report by the Mail Online, and I got shit for posting it because even though there's a lot of support in that post, I also got shit from people in, in the DMs saying, how do you trust uh, like, the da like the Mail Online, which is the Daily Mail, uh, for posting something like this? Everything in that report, which I looked through, um, unfortunately, um, they're all testimonies from parents. So they're concerned parents that have come out and said, "We need to, we need to get this done." the The government, weirdly, has put out an inquiry over the educational system um, to look into um, sex education and what's being taught because they're worried that it's it's being pushed too far. That's the government saying that. So we're in big trouble if, like, the government are even opening inquiries about the educational system. And during that time, um, there were people trying to gather uh, information on on RSE, um, which is relationships, um, sex education. And so we've now reached a point where parents parents now have a duty to to call this out and i don't and i i'm tired of the excuse you know i'm worried about the consequences of this the consequences is the corruption of your child that's that's the consequence you can't be worrying about anything else now like this is wrong you can't allow for this to continue so that's why i said in the video because you need you need to get parents to call to action because there's there's one thing saying or, or distributing this information but you almost need to tell parents now listen you need to you need to have a word with your school you need to you need to get in contact you need to find out what you, your child's um being taught i had messages after that video i had so many messages from parents like i couldn't get through them all where they were saying thank you so much for posting this I've tried to see the full curriculum of sex education that's being taught to my eight-year-old and they won't even give the full thing to me. Like the schools are refusing to give the full curriculum yeah, to yeah, their I've parents. Yeah, I've seen that in the US too, yep. Dude, it's so sad. And like, I don't, I don't have kids. Like I want kids. Like I want to get married. I want to I do the whole shebang. So to see this, to see this now, and I don't even have kids, like it breaks my heart for like parents that are so unsure about what is being taught to their child. And it pisses me off when I see parents almost dismissing it or saying, oh no, like, no, it's fine or whatever. It's not fine. This is not fine. Um, I've hey, had, do you see um, that we've come full circle from what we started the show with? We started the show with um, uh, that guy saying, hey, we need to take control of our schools. Yeah, And, and the reason why is because the liberals, the 87% of the teachers who are liberals are forcing sex, anal sex, oral sex 
transgender, say all just sex yeah. shit on your kids, and yet they're cons- it, It's just crazy that we made it. Full it's circle. crazy. It's crazy. And the idea is to take control of the school from a parent's perspective, not a governmental perspective. It's separating the state and education now. Um, so what, yeah, so that pisses me off that there are people coming out and saying, oh no, you just, it's, it's, um, it's sensationalism. It's not, it's not, it's there. The evidence is there. People taking photos of their homework. I was being sent screenshots of curriculums from other parents that, that obviously weren't in the video because the video had already gone up and they sent me all of this information about what's being taught. And I'm even reading it and going, what how, how like same question that you asked how the fuck did we get here like seriously um i've had who slipped that of, into the education oh, who was like yeah. okay um uh 12 uh 12 year old girls yeah. will get enjoyment it's activists from anal There's, sex and i'm like yeah. who like how did that slip into the classroom i'll tell you i'll tell you what i think we we have a new class now you know you've got like working class middle class higher class blah 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 we have an activist class now right? where there are these people, whether it be liberals, I think it's mostly liberals. Um, it would be disingenuous to say all liberals, but I'm sure that it would be others as well. But I think we have an activist class now on an institutional level, on a media level that are there to, to push their sort of worldview onto the innocents. I mean, you look at a child, a child's brain is like a sponge. They just absorb all the information that you throw at them. That's why a child is so fixated at the TV. I know we all are, but especially for a child, because when they're watching the TV, they're just soaking the information straight into their brain. And you, you watch like kids with iPads now. You notice that it's like the iPad generation oh, now where all well, kids dude. just have, they're just glued to like an iPad. and they're Or their parents' phones. It. You go to restaurants and it's just kids yeah. looking at their parents' phones everywhere. Yeah, it's literally that. It's because information can easily like transfer into the brain so quickly and so effectively that's why tv is so effective on on uh, changing people's minds because you're captivated you're in a state of trance and so back to the the activist groups but there's an activist class i believe that are looking to push this um onto onto children because their access to information is so susceptible rather than adults because they can't critically think at that age they just absorb what what's um, what's being said and they take it as the gospel. That's why you get so many kids coming into school. And I've had teachers give testimonies saying that kids will come into school and like pretend they're animals and say that they identify as animals. And if you go out against that, you're a bigot, you're, you're, uh, you're whatever. And there was a, a clip surfaced online recently that I'd done a reaction video on my YouTube channel about where kids a kid identified as a cat in a, in a school and other kids went, that's mental. Like you should be, you should be put in an asylum or something. They said a comment and the teacher went nuts at these two students. And luckily the students secretly recorded the conversation and this, and they were, it was like a debate of gender ideology between a teacher and like a, an eight year old. Yeah. That's one Ch- students debate teachers on gender ideology. And the teacher, oh, that's the teacher. Uh, that's what that was one of the teachers. That yeah, but there was like a primary school one, and then up in Scotland, it had like um, it had like an older student. He sounded like he'd been kept behind like a few years because he had like a deep voice. But um, it was fascinating, and it was I was watching it, and I was thinking, I can't believe that kids as young as like eight are like. Um, are challenging teachers on gender ideology and the teacher doesn't don't even know what they're talking about because it's an oh excuse me because it's an ideological wall it's been right. an ide- it's an ideological wall um that if you question it this screen comes up and it's like no nope, you can't talk about that it's almost like a, a like an antivirus almost and you are the virus <laughs> so they just try and block it they try and get rid of it but we're seeing this in an institutional level uh, in an academic level. Um, I don't know if it's because from the 60s, a lot of the hippies started going into the educational system and becoming teachers. And then that sort of trickled down uh, from Marxist ideology all the way from the 60s, all the way till now. And that the hippies grew up 
um, from the 60s all the way through the 80s and then started taking over the institutions. And then liberal dogma started being the main forefront of uh, education. And then now we see the big, like, the conundrum of that. You're now seeing um, institutions having one political bias. And if you're a conservative and you're in higher education or you're in school, you're like, you're the worst thing since, I don't know, some disease, um, you know, so you're now seeing this play out. So I think it's an activist class. I think we've seen this since the 70s. And I think it's not going to get better. Um, do I think that the government should step in? That's the big question. Do you right? know who doesn't have the activist class, by the way, are Asians? It's a, it's <laughs> really? a, it's a black. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a black and white phenomenon. Asians, Asians don't do that. It's not culturally part of what they do. You see very few, like you know what I mean. Like we 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 have a Jane Fonda and they have Al Sharpton and, and and I don't know if you know who these people are, but they're just like the activist class in the United States. They have Jesse Jackson and and we have mm -hmm. um, uh, Greta Thunberg. You, mm -hmm. you, you will not see Asians doing this shit. <laughs> Ironically, they make on average twice as much as all as white people and three times as much as black people uh, in the United States financially. Yeah, culturally, I've, I've read just, those. Yeah, it's, it's a culturally, it's just a trip. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Do you, do you remember where you were when I? So yeah, just just that, that, just that. I think that it's 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 been a, a top down stem of of activism since the sixties in the institutions, and now because you have powerful lobby groups uh, and the teachers union as well. The I know we I saw recently about the Supreme Court wiping down like affirmative action. The teachers' unions are the most powerful people in the United States. I don't think it's it's going to do as much, personally, um, because the teachers' unions in Britain, in the United States, in the Western Hemisphere, are, are one of the most powerful unions ever. And they are full of rabid, far-left ideologues in there. And whatever they say goes. So I believe that they, the unions, these powerful lobby groups as well, from Stonewall to... Um, teachers unions they're the ones that really run the countries because they're the ones that can push for policies for legislation change uh, changes to really push what goes in the curriculum and that's why the government are like hang on a minute we need an inquiry we didn't know about all this um so which is fascinating um that's my stance on it like i said could be wrong but to me that makes the most sense um, I'm, I'm starting to think that it's not the school that's the problem. It's the parents that expect the schools to raise their kids, taking yes. their kids out of public school, but not monitoring uh, their internet. Hey, do, I it's mean, partly, I'd say it's part, part that, wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent. I mean, there's kids who bring drop, there's parents who drop their kids off, like at a martial arts academy, thinking that that martial arts academy is going to fix your kid. And yeah. it's like, Hey, um, it, it, it doesn't quite work like that. Yeah. No. The parents are 51% to 99% to blame. Uh, Roxanne is wonderful. Children are no longer being educated. They're being inducted into a worldview. The state mm -hmm. does not accept the authority of the parent. That's what's that's scary. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And th this is the thing. This is why I keep saying parents need to take control. Now they need to get organized. They need to, they need to get together with like-minded parents Who's, who are saying enough is enough. We don't want this anymore. You you build that communities together, make group chats, make groups, whatever, sit down with each other, like over a beer or like something to eat, meet all the parents together and say, look, this is what's being taught to my kid. Oh, this is what be, this is what's being taught to my kid. What are we going to do about it? Okay. Well, we're going to have to confront the teachers. We're going to have to confront the head teacher. We're going to have to take this up a notch. Um, because something needs to be done. Um, and the parents have a lot more power than, than, they, than they're led to believe. They believe that the state can just take over everything or the institution can just take over everything. The unions, yes, are very powerful, but you have to, you, you're underestimating the power of um, parents getting together and, and standing together. So, yeah. Uh, Roxanne is wonderful. I believe she's from your part of the world too. If an awesome. adult started talking to your nine-year-old about masturbation, you would call the police. Exactly. <laughs> Why, does Why do get the to schools do this? get to do exactly. this? Exactly. Fuck. Exactly. I hate. It's, it's nuts. It's mad. Yeah. That's just. Uh, but this is the world we live in now.
Robbie Myers can um uh Lewis please say telly instead of telly. TV. Yeah, yeah, I'll say telly Thank from now you. on. Yeah, no problem. Well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, turn the telly off, lads. Come on. Turn it off. There's no point. It's crap. Uh couch. A very interesting uh picture. Uh, who cut your hair? <laughs> How many business uh employing adults would be able to show adults what they are showing children in schools without the employees complaining and even quitting? Holy exactly. shit. Holy and to think I have to censor all of what I said on social media, but yet they're showing that to kids. I so had to censor all of that. So if you showed up at McDonald's and when you got off of work, they were like, by the way, here's a pamphlet on how you can pleasure yourself. <laughs> yeah, there hey, you go. And, and, and what if it said, what if it said, uh, 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 you're, you, you get your work, you're working at McDonald's and they're like, by the way, I know you have a 12 year old daughter at home. Here's a pamphlet on how your 12 year old daughter can pleasure herself anally. You would be like, fuck, what the fuck's wrong with McDonald's? But yet your tax dollars are going to that. Wow. It's I love people who put things in context like that, what these what they're doing, don't you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It, it sort of it broadens the mind and it makes and, you think right. And what's crazy is it makes more sense that it would happen at McDonald's because it's a fucking private organization and you have the choice to whether to eat um, uh, hamburgers there or not or to work there. But school is just like the 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 civil the civilized funnel. I think it's even – I think you basically – in the United States, you have to send your kid to school or, or, or have some sort of schooling. I think it's illegal yeah. to just like – you can't just raise home your school. kid out in the field. Yeah. Mate, homeschool. It's got to be the way now. Uh. I would typically push back on these kids having phones in the class, but in this case, I'll be quiet. No, no, no phones in the classrooms. Fuck phones. No one should have phones, period. No kid. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Although uh, without... Roxanne, is, Roxanne is wonderful. The UK teacher called the child despicable for questioning a pupil who identified as being a cat. That's in your yes. video? Yeah, that's in my video. Yeah. 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 It's nuts, dude. Oh, so you attack the child. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like I've had, I know teachers, right? And they they tell me like the amount of kids that come in and pretend to be animals, and they like they aren't allowed to like. There are some teachers that just aren't allowed to say anything. Like, I would have. It's so I would have definitely. If I was in high school, I definitely would have done stuff like that. I was such a. Um, I would have done it just to make fun of stuff. Mm. Uh, um, here, I'm going to play this uh, a little bit of this. How are you on time, Lewis? Yeah, good. As okay, long as okay. possible. Okay, here we go. Believe why so many teenagers are non-binary now or, you know, switching their gender. I think it's because they don't have any, you know, point in the oppression meter and they want some. So non-binary is a really easy way to get some. You don't even need to change anything. You just have everybody call you some new pronouns and now you're oppressed. Now you get to be part of the club. And I always say that if this was happening when I was a teenager, no doubt in my mind, you guys would have to be calling me some pronoun you've never heard of before. <laughs> I, I, I want to I want to draw uh, so, so, uh, explain this a little bit better here and see what you think, Lewis. What I think she means is by by joining the oppressed class, she means getting attention. Yeah. There's a recent yes. Chris Rock stand up where he says that there's four ways to get um, attention. You can um, uh, show your ass. You know, that's like the the the, the thirst picks. You can um, uh, do, be infamous. That means um, uh, like um, uh uh, release a sex tape you can be yeah. really good at something that's like serena williams you know like you can just fucking mm -hmm. dedicate your life to being like the greatest athlete who ever lived and then there's four there's play the victim and that's the yes. oppressed class yes and, but i remember being a kid like i didn't know it now and i still don't i still wouldn't say i did it for attention but it must have been for attention i was really into rap music so i took out the back seat in my car and i put the 415s in and yeah, i carried cool. a gun under my um uh, uh, uh driver's seat and mm -hmm. like I would, although it was just a BB gun and I wanted, like, I was, I was like searching for attention. I played my music so fucking loud at like two in the morning. I just did things. You're just trying to figure out where you fit in, in the world. Right. Exactly. And you're trying to, and you're just trying to get fucking attention or, or like build some sort of identity. And if you don't have your kids in natural doing things like sewing dresses or working out or um, planting gardens, those will things that will naturally allow them to build an identity. Oh my God, I can grow carrots. I'm a person who grow carrots. Oh my God, I'm a black belt in karate. I can do that. Or, oh my God, I, I can sew my own clothes. If we taught kids those things, they would naturally, they wouldn't have to search for an identity. They wouldn't have to search for attention. They would be sure. actually creating it. 
they would be yeah. like, Oh my God, I'm someone who can actually take photographs. And it, it, it's, it's not that they necessarily want to be a oh, part of the oppressed class. They want to just get attention. Yes. And, and, exactly. and this, is, this is a retard way of getting attention. This is like, what's that thing called? The Prince Albert. When you put a piercing through your penis, what a yes, bizarre yeah. way to get attention. Yeah. Put a hole in the most valuable thing you'll ever have in your whole life. Your caucus. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me shiver, mate. Are, are you with me on all that? I'm with you, absolutely. I think it's because we see it as as, as an oppression cl uh, class as adults because we can differentiate it. We know where it's come from. We know that there is such things like oppression points when it's the workplace. You know, you get certain benefits, you get certain like, um, you get you get attention. But when you're a kid and you're growing up, you're trying to find yourself. It's a mad world we live in. And this is now part of this mad world because it's been normalized so much that they've realized, well, hang on a minute, I can have a bit of power here. You know, if I'm non-binary and someone calls me a name, like I can get them out of the class. So, yeah, I'm non-binary today. And yeah, they're like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. And if you call me something, you're a bigot. So see you later. Get out of the class. Oh, miss, he called me, he called me a he when actually I'm a she. Right, you've misgendered him. See you later. It's power. That's all it is. It's all power play. So, of course, kids are going to pick that notion up and utilize it. I mean, I would do that if I was yeah, a kid. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, I was like, right, I don't like this fucker at the back of the class. Right. He's been pissing me off all day. Miss, I'm actually transgender. This guy just called me uh, a he when actually my name's Louise. Um, and then that kid gets punished. The, ch the teacher can't say anything because the unions back that rhetoric up. And it's just a cycle. So, of course, kids are going to do that. And that's my that's my way of looking at it. Um, I think oppression class is just how we view it as adults. I think kids don't understand what oppression is. Um, and they don't really conceptualize the idea of, of what that word means, if that makes sense. Obviously, there is oppression, but they just they can't conceptualize the word oppression. Um, so in the West, anyway, um, so that's that's my stance on it. It's just kids is kids seeing a way that they can gain some power and utilizing it against other kids or to get attention. And I would even stem that that um, a lot of um, I think a lot of non non-binary adults are, are utilizing probably the same aspect. Uh, for you know? sure. For yeah, sure. it's it's all it's all attention. It's all I'm boring. I don't have a good personality. I'm not well looking. I'm not cool. So if I can do this, I can have some power. I can have some notion with that. I can have some attention. Do I think Lewis, that's all it is? I know a shitload of adults who have no purpose, and a, adult without a purpose becomes just a man, a manic uh, nut. So like, you, yeah. if you have a young a twenty year old man who has no purpose, he'll just he'll get probably get into violence thievery and pussy those are for some reason that's like what 20 year old men you know gravitate to without purpose or direction uh, but but we all know adults adults who don't have purpose or direction they gravitate towards uh towards activism uh mm -hmm. obesity and yep. uh um uh, a manic behaviors yeah sure i they start talking about how they have boundaries and shit and they, they just yeah they, like dude what, what are you doing yeah so that's what that's where I I think like the non-binary stuff, the transgenderism stuff that that coincides with the activism class that go that coincides with that. Um, so yeah, that that's how I see it. Yeah, I think it's but, more activism than opposed to to anything else really. Or you know you can go down the medical route, but you'll get banned for for talking about that. So I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Trish. How clean is Lewis's flat? It is actually um, a house. Um, it's pretty clean. What it's is that? Clean. A flat, an apartment? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you actually, when you open your front door, you step out and you're like on the ground. Yeah. There's like yeah, a street. You can see a street. Street. Cars. Yeah. 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 Uh, is Lewis metabolically healthy? Probably not. Uh, my diet sucks. I need to sort that out. You're too young to be getting up in the middle of the night to pee. Oh, I don't do that. Okay, all right, all right, cool. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> I just stay up late. <laughs> um, uh, Christian Kettler, uh, get drunk, have sex, get in fights, play sports. You'll find yourself. Jeez. It's one way to say it. 
Uh, all right. Thank you for coming on. I'm, I'm so it's, it's, um, I knew Dude, I was so excited it. to have you on. Thank you for Dude, doing it. Dude, like I was excited when I realized that I was coming on like a couple of days ago. I was like, oh, I can't wait for that. It's going to be good fun. Like, I'm so relaxed and can just sort of be myself. You're a great host, man. And uh, anytime you want me back on, just just let me know. I'd love to come back on. Okay, thank you. Hey, you know what would be interesting is to try doing a show with you that's like midnight my time. Yeah, that'd be cool. And then it's 8 a.m. your time. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I, oh, I'm please. hoping to. Look I want to get to the US. Analyzed. I believe that Lewis is lashing out at culture rather than fixing himself. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> can it be both? Can't uh, he be lashing out at culture? Well, can't he? Can't he be? <laughs> <laughs> I've cleaned my room. If that's what you're you're getting at, I've Jordan Peterson it. Don't you worry. I've cleaned my room. She's suggesting that. Um, um, uh, instead of uh, uh, working out and working on your diet, you sure. are um, uh, working on other things, or, or or like attacking other people's shortcomings instead of your own. You know what I mean? Well, these shortcomings actually affect the world and our surroundings. I mean, I don't want to sound like a climate activist because that's what they're like. Um, right. Listen, I'm always about Trish, fixing myself. You can talk so. to Trish directly. Trish is a, a fixture on this show. Awesome. Because so sorry. Go ahead. Culture. T talk yeah. to Trish, Lewis. To give Trish a piece of your mind. Um. Uh, I have cleaned my room. Don't you worry. Um. Mm. <laughs> look, she might be right. Who knows? I mean, I haven't really thought about it like that. You I'm doing very, this. You sound very open-minded. I'll take that. Thanks, dude. <laughs> um. Yeah, I could, she could be right. Who knows? Um. I I do what I do because um. I just want to make change, and I feel like I haven't done in a while. I've sort of been blissfully ignorant of the world and what goes on, um. Mm. For years, and I feel. I feel like it's almost like a duty because when you see pockets of information, and you start to realize people have been lying to you, especially with like the Trump saga was what what awakened it. The Brexit saga is what awakened it. And then you go back and say, well, what else have they lied about? And then you sort of, you sort of, I feel as though it's almost like a duty to get information out. And when I see like something that isn't right and not SJW, like, like I'm not social justice. It's more, it's more sort of information justice, right? Because it's, there's an information warfare out there and you, you need, you need to, to tell people what's going on. You need to keep people informed. I don't think the the media class or the media party do a great job of that. So I feel the need to go out and tell the truth to the best of my ability. And, that, and that's it. I appreciate it. Maybe today also you'll be like, fuck, maybe Trish got in your head and you'll be like, fuck. Maybe. I'm going to be gonna, thinking gonna, about gonna, it all night. I, I'm going to run for 15 minutes. I think I am. I, I'm going to do some sit-ups. I'm going to go, go for, for a, a jog. Yeah, just go. go <laughs> Thanks, Trish. I appreciate the comment. Uh, Lewis, I, I look forward to having you back on. Thanks for uh, fighting the good fight. Thanks for being a clear thinking uh, human being on planet Earth. And um, thanks for holding it down over the pond over there. Oh, dude, thanks again as well. And thanks for having me on. And like I said, man, anytime you want me on, just give me a bell and we'll uh, we'll get that done. Awesome, brother. Thank you. Nice one. Cheers. Trish coming in hot. I have some exclusive footage of Jeffrey Birchfield again. Exclusive footage of Jeffrey Birchfield. <laughs> exclusive. Uh, Lewis, say hello to Boris for us. Fucking Boris. Uh, Jeffrey Birchfield coming in hot. Here we go. I have a feeling he's like uh, teaching uh, bioethics or some shit now. So he's going to miss the this this exclusive footage i have of uh jeff you guys ready you guys ready uh, alpha male jeffrey birchfield lifting weights indoors you guys ready you guys ready here we go here we go here he is here's, here's the man the myth the legend body weight 237 10 pound drop uh, give a treat to the ladies. Oh, 10 pound drop. Giving a uh, here. There he is. There's Jeff. 
A 10 pound weight loss, giving the ladies a little treat. Here we go, Jeffrey. Shirtless. <laughs> Shirtless. May 14, 2022. Body weight 237. 190 for three on a bench. 190 for three. Big Jeff. Hair looking good. Jeff, you're old school. You still use a comb, I can tell. Dudes don't really brush their hair or comb their hair anymore. Get those elbows out, Jeff. <coughs> Booyah. Some guys got it. <laughs> Some guys don't. I got it. Just so it goes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, James Townsend getting some uh, Dusty Rhodes. Was that some WWE? Anyway, I will continue periodically to uh, have access, uh, deep access to... Uh, I have deep access to Jeff's uh, old archive of uh, weightlifting. Before he switched to deadlift, he was way big into the bench press. Uh, look at James Townsend. James Townsend. Good job, Jeff. Yeah, good job, Jeff. Uh, can uh, uh oh, I am in big trouble. This is not a good sign. Stand by, hold on, hold on. I got, of course, I have to fix the phone. I am in big trouble. Uh oh, hi, Jeff. Hello, Jeffrey. So, um, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Don't yeah. brag, just fact, brother. <laughs> just straight asshole. Straight up asshole, man. God, but I time, love you for it. Every time this guy pops up in my feed, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> A little treat for the ladies. It was really kind of you. It was really kind of you. I think James Townsend yep. actually really thinks that's you. Like, I think half the people actually think that's you. <laughs> Even after you calling in, they're still gonna think it's you. I, I know they are. So you know, it is what it is. They can't you help put it. me on the map, Savon. I um, it, it's it's the power of media. It's the power of media. You just right. I, I'm programming them. It was a whole show about programming people about lies, and here I am programming people with some lies. That's right. Fake news, brother. Fake news. Hey, what are you doing today? Are are you teaching today? I am not teaching today. I am headed to my country home, if you will, to do some towel work. What's that mean, towel work? So we've been remodeling a bathroom, so I have to tile the shower. Oh, tile, tile. That uh, tile and towel oh, yeah, tile. are the same word from where you're oh, from. Okay, I'm that's sorry. Texas talk. That's okay. Texas talk. Texas talk. Sorry. Um, you do that? You do you have a tile cutter? You have like one of those saws that like shoots water everywhere and cuts the tile? I have a, just a, a diamond blade that's kind of on a rack thing that I can run across there, but no, I don't have a diamond. Uh, diamond saw you like that you like tiling i do not like tiling but it is a means to an end so i also don't like paying people to do work that i know i can do did your wife choose the tiles she did yeah that's cool and she'll be happy about it and that's cool oh yeah absolutely and we tile just the floors or the walls too be a uh, whole nine yards. Okay, shit. Awesome. That's cool. What were you going to say? So she'd the, rather the, what? Oh, she'd rather be doing the tiling herself. Tiling. Uh, you know what? Magnus does bring up a good point. Hold on one second. Magnus says their voices do sound identical. Let's uh, – let's uh, well, hold on one second. That's very interesting. Hold on. Let's play, uh, <laughs> let's play Jeff from uh, 2022 one more time. Hold on. Let's, let's listen. Magnus doesn't Why? know anything. He's from like Greenland or somewhere like that. He's a, a ger he's a German living in Mexico. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's listen to this guy. Let's listen. Weight 237, 10 pound drop. Thought I'd give a treat to the ladies. Shirtless. <laughs> May 14, 2000. God, it does sound like you. Holy shit. That guy does not sound like me. All Southerners sound the same. Are you? Would you consider you're a Southerner, right? You consider yourself a Southerner? Yes, I was born and raised in Texas. Hmm. All right. 
Well, thank you for calling in. Enjoy your time at your uh, uh, summer home. Uh, it sounds very bougie. It's not very bougie. It's over 100 years old and needs lots of work. All right. Sounds fun then. But, hey, it's good talking to you. Good talking to you too. Thank you. Good show. Thank you. Bye-bye. The smartest man in the chat, Jeffrey Birchfield, also uh, the guy who has a bench press inside his house. Uh, the voices sound identical. I know, Magnus. I, I think that, too. All those Southern guys sound the same. All right. Uh, dude, today's show, 6.30 p.m. It's the big CrossFit game show. J.R. Howell, Brian Spin, John Young. That means, like, I wonder if J between J.R. and Spin, they're not even going to be able to get in a word edgewise with me and John straight dominate great topics today we'll talk about the cuts we'll talk about the grip debacle we'll talk about the weight belt i got some clips from of uh queued up of laura horvat training over there at krypton we can even pull up that ridiculous piece of uh propaganda that uh Fikowski and vellner made that faa video it was ridiculous. I got a clip here of uh, Ben Bergeron on coffee wads and pods to play for you guys. I got so much fun stuff for the show tonight. This team uh, uh, from CrossFit 8035, some chick on there popped for Drugas. We can talk about her. We've got some clips from Training Think Tank. Max El Hajj talking about self-awareness, ath ath athlete self-awareness. Oh, I even got a clip from Talking Elite Fitness. Uh, Mariah Moore on Talking Elite Fitness. You know what I'm realizing too? <laughs> the more so, so uh, I'll save it for the show. Anyway, I, I, I'm it, it's all. I think this is all good. Um, I think this is all good with uh, Dave coming in. I'm excited. What about Pat Barber's post? Oh, Pat, let me see what did Pat. Let me see what did Pat. Uh, that Jack Dorsey video was weird, right? Uh, Pat, uh, Patrick Vellner, Patrick Bet David. Oh, Pat Patrick Barber. Here we go. Let me see. Let's see what we got. Where? This one here? I know what I could use these for. <laughs> Hanging rings. All right. Now that you're ready to set this up on your beautiful pull-up bar, first we take the strap, and then we push the strap through the magic hole. Oh, wow. Look at those rings. Is that the video you're talking about? Oh, it's on, it's on woo, 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 woo. What's woo, woo? Woo, 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 Oh, the daily CrossFit tip. Oh, shit. Here we go. I didn't even know he had this. What is this? What is this thing? Woo Woo Affiliate has the tools you need to maximize your coaching, culture, and member experience. It's $199 a month. They got Kelly Clark on there. Death to Wellness. This one? No, not that one. This one? So for me, I don't come from the fitness industry. I come from voice and musical theater. So when I learned it, it was like, this is not easy to understand. Right. So when I deliver it, I'm like, how do I make it as that's possible? Because that's how I understand it. Right. So I've taken, it's been 20 years, you know, like it's been a long time of me, roughly actually 18 years yeah. of like trying to internalize it in a way that it can be understood. And I think that's where we have an opportunity in a space like this, in a setting like this to pull it back to where it can be heard and just make it good. So what do we try to do? So any questions? I will at least point you in the right direction. 
so for me, I don't come from the fitness industry. I come from voice and musical theater. What about it? What so about when it? I learned it, I do like it, it how he like, talks like a rap star. You know, like a rap star when he drives, he'll do like he'll be, like talk about driving. He goes like that. And I liked it how when he said something about hearing or something, he pointed out his ear. Seb, I'm playing dumb. He knows what post we're talking about. What the fuck? Jesus Louise being smart and pointing out how dumb I am. Death to wellness. It's never been about wellness. It's about fitness. If you don't understand this, then you don't understand CrossFit. That It's never been about wellness. It's all about fitness. If you don't understand this, then you don't understand CrossFit. Uh, uh, semantics alert. I like that. I'll buy that. You can't even get people to buy in when it's death and it's to sickness. I'd buy that shit. I don't get it. Is there some, is this, is this image a, a double picture? Is it like two people having sex? What the fuck am I looking at? I don't understand either. I don't understand either. Oh, and re it's, it's, I don't do Twitter talk. F oh, sickness, wellness, fitness continuum. It's it's a play on that sickness, wellness, fitness continuum, uh, um, death to fitness, and it's supposed to be what the fuck? Death. It's never been about wellness. It's about fitness. Sickness, wellness, sickness, wellness. I don't get it. Sorry, someone's gonna have to say. Savon, if you are fit, you have to pass through um, wellness to be sick. Remember, yeah. It goes sickness, wellness, fit. I guess I don't understand CrossFit. I I don't do I I don't do um uh this is Twitter talk to me. I don't do Twitter talk. I don't do I try, I try not to read into shit. I need it just explained to me. Okay, just leave it. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Robbie, I like you though. Wellness is what we should be ask the world to strive for. Fitness is for the elite. I would, I, what I really want is I want that head right there to be like two people having sex, it, it, but also be a skeleton. And you kind of like, um, um, yeah. I hate it when people say this. This this one always kind of stings. Sevon, you're not dumb. You're just plain dumb. Uh, you, uh. You're not watching a smart guy. You're just justifying the fact that you spent two hours and 12 minutes watching me and then are afraid to realize that I really am dumb. How about that? Uh, okay. I think, um, I think I'm done until tonight. Unless you guys want to see something. I'm afraid if I stay on here too long, I might tell you, start telling you guys secrets. I showed Jeffrey Birchfield. You guys want to see Kamala Harris? Oh. How about that video in the beginning of the show? Kind of unbelievable. All right, I'm done. I think I'm done. Do you remember that guy, Will Roosh, I had on the show? Do you guys remember him? He's the teacher. He's the um, uh, he's not a Jew, but he teaches at a Jew school. And, he's, and he has that Instagram account. He was pretty cool. I didn't have him on very long. He's had on all sorts of really cool people. Do you guys remember him? Uh, so last uh, question. Did you hook pool boy up with Sarah? Here's the chocolate dick, by the way. I haven't eaten it. Andrew Hiller got me the chocolate dick.
Someone sent me this. I forget who sent me this. My Tupac. I can't wait to get my desk organized. A chocolate dick and a Tupac. Uh, Sarah, yeah, yesterday's podcast with Sarah was pretty cool. Someone wrote that the first uh, 10 minutes were awkward and lame, and I responded to them on YouTube. I said the first 10 minutes with uh, the guys and your mom is always uh, awkward too, but never lame. I'm always looking for a place to put in a good um, your mom joke. I'm always torn, like whether I should or should not respond to people on um, on YouTube. Dude, yesterday's show with Brian and Jr. and Taylor. Not only is it killing it, but Taylor is shirtless. Jr. is wearing like a leather. It looks like a leather vest, sleeveless leather vest, and then Brian's fully clothed. It's like weird. The Sarah show, of course, is absolutely murdering. She's a great guest. Part of me thought Sarah was going to retire. David said, is Sarah tuning up her face the same way Danielle Brandon and, and, and Brooke Entz tuned up their faces? And then he left a, um, and then he left a, like some emoji of some like really weird lips. And then someone else said, what are you talking about, dumb? It's like, well, it's kind of obvious what he's talking about. He's wondering if Sarah's getting like shit pumped into her face. I don't know if I'm a fan of... I, I know I'm not a fan of shit getting pumped into girls' faces. Olivia, I was on the fence with Sarah for years. Last night's show made me fall in love with her. That it, It's really hard not to fall in love with her, right? Uh, Robbie Myers, uh, Seb on Friday evenings don't work for me. Please consider moving the show to Thursday evenings. Um, three thirty-five power snatch coming up. Where's that? I'd like to see that. I I, I can't. I I I understand. I I trust me. I don't want to do. Um, I don't want to do Friday night shows either, dude. I just have to. I'm I'm trying to prove a point right now with that show. And um, and you guys are helping me do it. I don't want to do that show either. Trust me. I don't want to do that show on Friday night. That's not 335. That's more like five. It's a good ass life for James Townsend. Is your lady wearing Birkenstocks? Is this okay? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try a muscle up now that my bicep is getting better. I haven't done a muscle up in forever. Do a strict muscle up today. I should try that. Whoo! No collars? No collars? Someone school me on collars. Why isn't James using collars? Collars are silly. You don't got time for that. Boom. My goodness. <laughs> Mason Mitchell. Yeah, tear right off the bat. <sighs> I, I'll warm up really good. Uh, okay, here we go. Th and this is why I don't want to stay on because I'm afraid I'm going to go here. Sevon, theoretically, if there had been talks to bring back behind the scenes, would you theoretically tell us? No, not yet. If there have been talks, I wouldn't tell you yet. How's that? I fucking know I shouldn't be on the air right now. 
Uh, Kenneth Delaps, uh, never put collars on Savon. It's more safety without them or safer. Moss, Moss safer. I'll do, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm good at muscle ups. I mean, I should be. I'll do a shitload. I'll, I'll warm up and be a sweaty mess. Um, uh, I'll warm up and get to turn myself into a sweaty mess on the assault bike. And then I'll, and then I'll jump to the top of the rings and I'll slowly lower myself a few times. You know what I mean? Maybe to my knees, maybe do two of those on the minute for 10 minutes and then I'll try one and see what happens. <clears throat> Feel good. <clears throat> No, no late night injury. Late night injury. No. Okay. Although I didn't sleep well at all last night. It was so fucking hot in my room. And one of my kids climbed into bed with me. And it was a fucking shit show. All right, guys. I will see you tonight, 6.30 p.m. It's going to be a wild show. Big show. Big show tonight. All right.